So I'm not rushing, spaced out swag, best believe I'm paper touching, super stupid flow, and you bitches can't tell them nothing, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand me, got a sense for drama, so I always keep the cannon, this is the invasion, so watch out for our landing, standing, Tall, never too far Spring and summer fashion, bro, I get it in the fall Y'all about to start hating and I don't mind at all I'm a thriller like MJ and my flow is off the wall Who that? Who that? Then I around It's gotta be my imagination I think it's an invasion I think it's an invasion I think it's an invasion They not from around here I think it's an invasion Who that? Who that? Greetings, earthlings, I am Wallo, I am Wallo, I am Wallo, I live life like there's no tomorrow, Chris King, KG, N-O-O-B, what homes you ain't know, we're UFO, cargo khakis, polos, and fresh kicks, that's the definition of what the cargo kids is, S-O-S, yes, space style swagger, I never do anything right, I'm back. We're rolling. We're live. Welcome to the mothership, bitches. How y'all doing? Another episode on the SS Who That. What up? This is the Who That podcast. As always, this is B. Um, once again, we have the captain, Demario. <laughs> what up? What up? I guess over here, the uh, cam. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore the cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Rachel's gone this this week. She's going off uh, doing some dope stuff with the um, with the club. And we have Tay Tay here, gonna, gonna kick it with us this week and uh, What's up? fill in. <laughs> it's her first time with us, but she's real cool. Y'all gonna love her. But um, what y'all what y'all been doing? Had a good week? Uh, yeah, this week's been good. good. Week. Um, I've had my ups and downs this week, but it's uh, as far as the podcast has been going good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Numbers are up. The cam, you know, that stuff is going real well. So shout out to all the uh, listeners and view now viewers we have. Yeah, what's yeah. up, y'all? So um, we brought uh, Tay Tay on here. She's a friend of mine. She's awesome, y'all. I uh, I wish I could keep her full time, you know. But you know, she's got she's got life and stuff, and she models and she's a cook. So that's that's real good. Um, You want to introduce yourself? Tell somebody about yourself a little bit. Yeah. So uh, normally on Sundays I do meal prep. I might have to move that around because this has been really fun so far. Um, Love to cook work and clean I'm a little housewife yeah with a full-time job yeah i'd like to get her um her husband on here he uh i want him to talk about pro gaming he uh oh, he's oh. got a he's got a title for um magic the gathering yes magic the yeah. gathering so he, he, he's yeah. got a few of them yeah yeah so we're gonna have him on here one day man definitely yeah All right. that's a <coughs> aspect i think that's uh, what's his name uh carl schroeder Carl Schroeder. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Carl. Carl. <laughs> I have to show him this letter. He'll feel famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you? What's your week consist of? Um, my week has been pretty pretty good. It's been um, interesting. I've just been running around, but I like it like that. It's better to be busy. That's a blessing. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. 
was with the guys from the gym. Um, just left from the ceremony uh, right before coming here. Uh, we shout out it. to all the kids that graduated from the program. Yeah, shout out to all the all the kids that got their medals, their certificates, the uh, t shirts, and everything. Right, it was real fun. Had a real coach moment, so okay. that was that was cool. So, I mean, it's been a nice little week. America's had a tough week. Oh, yes. America. Oh, America. I've had a cool week, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get into that. We're gonna, I think we're going to do our first guest, and then we're going to get into the politics. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. stay tuned for that, too. We're going to talk about all that. Man. So Man, It's been pretty good. Rolled my ankle yesterday. Yeah. Cool. Always going through damage. Uh, running on a trail. Shout out to the to some of the other coaches that, that were um, – that showed me the trail, uh, Toon B and uh, Lorenzo. Right. I was out there, in, oh, and Terrell. We out there running, and eight miles was nine miles, but I only made it to, like, seven. Man, and I I tapped out. It was my first time, but, like, it's, it is a, a trek. It, it, <laughs> it's called the Trail of Tears. Yeah. 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 But it was it was interesting. And you ran it all. I ain't run it all. Oh, okay. I ain't run it all. I, ain't, I, I can't even like lie. <laughs> no. Right. I, I put a dent in it, but I'm gonna go back. Yeah. And, yeah. I'll finish it up, but yeah. Man, it'll kill. It's just, it's just different. It's just a different type. It's a bike trail. Right. So it's for bikes. So you're running it though. So the whole time I'm thinking in my head like, I'm very tired. Like I need a bike. I don't even right. have a bike. I'm defeating myself. I'm, right. But. Uh, so what fun. type of terrain was it? If it's a bike trail, are we talking about like mud, dirt? Yeah, like okay. mud, dirt, rocks, boulders. Then they and that's a bike dirt. trail? Yeah, I don't even understand how they ride it. Like, yeah. quite honestly, I don't see how it's possible. I don't see many black because bikers either. No, <laughs> no. That's dangerous. Yeah. Because there would be points to where like like the creek or the river or whatever would be like on one side and then it goes up an incline and around. Uh -huh. So I don't know how you're in mud going on an incline up around a tree. Right. But the fact that I'm running it lets me know like bikes have had to do this, but I don't get it. Right. Uh, no. I, <laughs> one yeah. slip and you're in the river. Right. Forget that. Uh, I mean, I imagine that's that's probably like the uh, the thrill for them, you know. Yeah, I don't need that type. Of, that's uh, that's <laughs> yeah. white people stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, like, it's just, so, I don't need that type of thrill. Tay, Tay, tell us about this. <laughs> um, well, I don't even know how to ride a bike. Oh, so. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, but I probably also couldn't run it. Yeah. Either. So there's that. <laughs> Can you swim? I. Uh, I can doggy paddle. You can doggy paddle. Yeah, that, that counts. Yeah. Shout out I, to all the doggy paddlers. Right. Like that. that counts. Right. I do my best. As long yeah. as you don't drown, that's swimming. Yeah. You're the statistic for white people. No biking, no swimming. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No hiking, no camping. No, no, we don't do none of that. None of that. <laughs> none of that. None of that. You've introduced me to a lot of interesting foods and stuff, though. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what some do you, weird stuff. Tell me about some of them dishes that you were you were making. Um, when I make different stuff every yeah, week. Yeah, you uh, you introduced me to a lot of Thai food at one oh, point. Yeah, some Thai curries. Yeah, I went I've to been uh, wanting to try that. Yes, I need to bring some. I only see it on on the TV though. Like, it's I've never good. Had opportunity. It's, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was good. I, I'll vouch for that. It was good stuff, man. Um, it's try. really spicy. If you mm -hmm. like spicy, hell yeah. Um, and then over the weekend, something that I ate was um, I hope I don't say this wrong, takoyaki. Uh -huh. It's actually like a fried ball, so it's almost like a hush puppy, but it's got octopus in it. Oh. And it was awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. It was so good. Yeah. I wish I could make that at home. I don't even know where to buy octopus. Yeah. But At one time, we had talked about going into business. She made, what was it that you were talking about? Oh, selling? the Green Goddess. The Green Goddess sauce. You ever had Green Goddess sauce? No. It's fucking never heard of it. You can't buy Kraft's Green Goddess. It's no. fucking disgusting. But like some some homemade green goddess sauce. It's got to be refrigerated. Gotta it's got to be made be. with love. Yeah. So it's um. What's it's, in it? Um. So it's got this is a secret recipe. No, I'm just kidding. It's got um <laughs> avocados and Greek yogurt, some thyme and parsley and dill. Yeah. Salt, pepper, lemon okay. juice. Yeah. A little bit okay. of vinegar. Okay. Yeah. Hey, but it's it's fire, bro. I'm it tastes kind of like ranch. Yeah. But it's yeah. got like. A quarter of the calories and it's thick and delicious. Yeah, it is. It's creamy in a good way. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. I didn't know how to respond. Yeah, it's, like, it's creamy. Big, delicious, creamy. <laughs> yeah, she would make it. When I worked with her, she'd make it and I'd be like, look, you gotta bring me a jar. You know, I'd fuck up a whole jar. I'd dip chips in it. I would dip food in it. I yes. would put it on anything. 
wings. Yep. Nah. Breakfast sandwiches. Oh. Salad, good. Now you're talking my language. Something that I could dip some wings in gets my attention. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about wings earlier too. Yes. yes. What, what's your favorite wing place? Um, I can't think of the name of that place in Atlanta. No, it was in off Atlanta. Ponce de Leon. Huh. Lemon pepper good, and huh? hot. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm talking about. We advertise yes. it today. Hey, I think yeah. the hood flavor is lemon pepper. And that's hot. the yeah. That's I, I the think hood that's flavor. That's confirmed. That's confirmed. Like yes. the best flavor. Yes. <laughs> the hoods. It, uh, Sponsors lemon pepper. Yeah, lemon pepper and mild, or lemon pepper and hot. Either yeah, one. Yeah, definitely sponsor the lemon pepper. What about you? you? Got a favorite wing place? Um, man, Harold's in Chicago, bro. Ooh. My God, man. Yeah. Because uh, when we were on tour in March, right? Uh, one of the stops was Chicago, and we had like maybe a good half a day to ourselves before we had to do the show right first spot i went was harold's i just heard about it in rap songs too much yeah like, I'm about they to rapping go. about these wings it's got to be fire Bro, it's got to be fire yeah <laughs> man and i and i really wanted to try so i got like an 18 piece right just different yes. different flavors and all that right tore them all up yeah hell wow. yeah every flavor is amazing every there and then detroit um if somebody from Michigan is watching or listening, they could help me out with this. But I don't know the name of the spot, but there's a seasoning that you can only find in Detroit called Chicken Crack. I know what you're talking about. Bruh. Yes, yes. It's chicken across crack. the street from the legal weed spot. My God. Yes, yes. The dispensary. Yes. My God. I don't even know the name of that. My brother. I don't know there. either. Yeah. They, but they got chicken crack that they sprinkle on the chicken. It's fire. And it, and it kind of makes me feel some type of way that it's called Chicken Crack. And it, it's so good that like... You you really for real like be like I need that in my yes. life. Yeah. But damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I name. went to a place that used that chicken crack and then they put like this queso type like yeah. over it. It was fucking fire. Bro. It was wonderful, dude. It was Don't everything. Know, man. Shout out to them, but that's yes. probably the best chicken spot. But Harold's is the only one I can remember the name. Yeah. It just blew my socks off. Yeah. Blew yes. my socks off. To me, hometown wings, I would go with uh, it's either Willie's or Embers. You know what I mean? I like oh, Embers. Embers. I didn't even think about that. You yes. bought them wings in that one time. They were good. Yes. I, I do a double Cajun with a side of um, a side of medium sauce. Mm. And then, I, you know, it's just fire. You know what I mean? And then uh, Willie's, I do, you know, lemon pepper, pepper. and mild. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Can't go <laughs> yeah, Can't go wrong. for sure, for sure. So what? Oh, what happened? Did we lose? Oh no, we're good. We're good. Thought we lost connection for a minute. Uh, but so yeah, yeah, you got me hungry over here now, man. Yeah, yeah. What's the next topic? What are we gonna? We gonna um, get a guest? Go yeah, ahead. we got guests today. We got um, guests. Yeah, I mean, we've got two guests. Our first guest is uh is Joe from Revolution <laughs> Inc. He's going to talk about, you know, the tattoo game and, uh, you know, a few other little topics. And if you are on the Who That page, if you're not on the Who That page, first off, I don't know how you're seeing this. But if you're just watching a watch party or however, um, go like the Who That page. But if you've seen the video on the Who That page, it was a, one of our video of the weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Was that that was, that was the back of Revolution? Yeah, that was the back yeah, of Revolution. I talk about that. Did you guys <laughs> see the video? Uh, of the guy yeah. who just randomly finger bangs himself in the back. Randomly, this, like. Like outside. This wasn't during man. hours. So I'm going to back it up a little bit. So I'm We're guessing you got a notification on your phone. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and with this notification, what time of day was this at? Uh, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Just this, getting the day started. I just made a pot of Calder Verde. Yeah. And nice. I was just diving into it. It was done and. There's that notification. I look on the phone and uh, <laughs> my stew looked good, but this was just insane, man. I couldn't deal with it. I was like, get out of here right now, 7 a.m. And I see the broad daylight, people getting out of their stuff to get into the Maury County public transportation vehicles. <laughs> All right. And this guy just decided to start doing an open porno right on my back step. Yes, y'all. He... He literally he set his phone yeah. down. He uh he put his head to the side like like this he, and he got comfortable. Yes, and oh, the nigga got comfortable. Yes, no, yeah, no, he was no, he was there for the long haul. Right, <laughs> and he proceeded to finger bang himself in the ass. And it was not stoop. it was not like a I'm trying to sneak and do this. No, like, I found the the best place right now for me to get this one off. Like, uh, you might you that. might be able to put that on Pornhub and make you a couple might. dollars. <laughs> like I heard people comment that he was digging something out or trying to 
get drugs out of his no like, no he just literally laid up and made himself comfortable like you said and just Man. went to town yeah he yes. wasn't digging for shit he was digging for something there wasn't no drugs the sad part too like if anyone knows this guy like you just seen I'm never shaking someone's hand again like right. yo pumps have yeah. to be a thing from now on yes like, yo what <laughs> the hell so and then just just went went on about his day just moseyed on yeah like, yeah hey. yes so we uh when this episode airs there'll be a skit we did in the beginning of it you can only catch that on the actual podcast yes you know all the skits are on the podcast we don't do them on the live stream and stuff so but yeah that's so uh subscribe download the podcast yeah mm-hmm. for sure even for the viewers there's stuff that you're missing so yeah there's more when you yeah there's more than just this so yes. but the fact all right and i don't want to harp on it though but i'm just curious when when you are looking at the at the tape, right? And it's it's the morning, it's it's whatever, like how do you just process like how do you go about are there preventative steps for that now? Like, you just, you just take that and like, I, I, I wish. Uh, <laughs> you know, when it's when it's your business first, like you literally every notification is important because right. you don't know what's going on. Right. So and that get that's nice to have that kind of security. So when you're at home, you can always check on it. Right. When you see something like that, you know, like there's no real harm being done to your business, so to say. But this is like, my man, right now, <laughs> like, right? And I've seen that. That's not the only. There's plenty of stuff I've seen on that camera. So the so the camera like notified you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey just Brandon, scary. we need to go back there one morning and just fuck with Joe. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like for real, just go with some wild ass shit. Yeah, she won't be the first. A lot of people have done it. They'll pull up in the front in the morning and flip me off. They'll wave. Yeah. I had a couple people moon me. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> just because they knew I was watching somewhere, like Joe's gonna get this. He, I gotta say hi. <laughs> this is a high, not like you know. Yeah. You don't see your ass. Yeah. Like, Here's my asshole. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So, um, Joe, introduce yourself. You're in here, yeah, kind of tell just us. Jump straight into I'm the Joe Canero. I'm the owner of Revolution Inc. Right next to me is my apprentice Sydney Cothran, who is phenomenal. Yeah, man, that's what we do. We run ink and we have fun. You know, so, uh, been in Columbia for what 11 years. First starting, I've been here a total of almost 16. Oh wow, it's wow. been a good run, man. I love Columbia. You yeah, know, it's a good. It is a good place for business, especially ink, but it seems like it's getting worse and worse, you know, every month. What you mean worse and worse? Oh, you got what does that mean? Shots here, there, drive bys, shootings, yeah. uh, it, it every pain clinic that goes up, it seems like it gets worse every time another pain clinic goes up. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. And the worst the worst part about those pain clinics, okay, they're there and they're providing them people with opiates and shit and then they close down and then people can't find opiates and then next thing you know they're a heroin junkie. That, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you're getting it's arrested like if you got any weed on you. Yeah, right. Thank you. But you yeah. could legally sell the opioids and, and get away with it. Yeah. Then, I don't even understand how that's legal. Yeah. Yep. It shouldn't be. I mean, when you sit there, I got one next door to my business, and I watch it every day. And I see the people coming in. They're not in good shape. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? They're not. It's, it's heartbreaking to watch, but they get away with this and doing it. I yeah. mean, it'd be like just if you saw someone dealing crack on the street, the cops would arrest them. It's just as bad. They just got a door you got to walk through first. That's it. That's so, it. They got a business license for this shit. You know what That's I mean? the only difference. I'm in the wrong business. Right. <laughs> you know You know how many guests I've had on here that I've been like, fuck podcasting. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're like, oh, I made 50 grand doing this. I made 30 grand doing that. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, man. Um, so, how long have you been doing it? Tattooing total. 17 years tattooing. Yeah. 17 years yeah, 17 years I tattooed for 6 months Like 2 years ago How'd you like it? I mean I, I love it But I I realize I don't know what, what it's called But If I don't feel like Doing a fairy On your foot right now <laughs> like, I know what you're doing fairy on your foot Like I don't I don't Dude, well, that's the like, difference. I don't have that That get up and go To be like Let if, me knock this out If you're an artist you. man You can pretty much Do anything But a lot yeah. of times Like a simple fairy To me or Sydney we could do Right for you, that's it might be tough or maybe boring. You know, boring, some people man. don't want like do that's it. what you want. But I man, when you're in the that. industry, you get more off on the smile on someone's face. 
See, and that's the thing. Yeah, I don't get off on it. That's that's. See, I just like, like it though. Man. I'm really in the tattoo, obviously, but I'm like the the culture, like the history of it, the the whole thing. Like I was just like from tattoo magazines when I was little and everything. Man, I'll so tell I just you really story. One night I'm working. One of those guys, you know, can make the make no, the, the needle go. One night I'm working late, and we're ready to close. I think it's like eleven o'clock. A woman walks in. She wants a baby footprint. She had. You know, mm-hmm. I've, I've done many, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's a constant rerun. It always happens. Right. I was like, man, you know, I don't, we're just getting ready to close. So well, I lost my daughter. So, you know, then this is where it gets you. Most people be like, well, I'm closing down. This is the end. You know, we're right. shutting down. I, I couldn't do it. I was like, man, I'll stay. I'll do it yeah. for you. You know, that way that made her night. I don't yeah. know what closure it gave her, but that made me happy enough to do that for her. Damn, you know, that's cool. some people yeah. might just go, "Hey, I don't want to do it." See, that's that special quality that like makes like a tattoo artist a real tattoo artist. Yes, I, yes. I wasn't a real one. I just, I just like making the needles. Man, I mean, a, lot of, <laughs> but a lot of people try it though. You know, a lot of people do it. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen about thirty apprentices in the town I've been in Columbia. Wow. And uh, you will see it, man. A lot of people think they got it, think they can do it, and mm-hmm. you see them, and you watch them go through the chain, six months later, they're like, I can't do this. That's what I hit. And there's a mental wall, breakdown, man. man. Right. It's hit wall. It would. And Man, was, but that's all right, though. You know, at least you're trying. Somebody tried something, you know? It's just like being a kid trying food. You ain't going to be like it unless you try it. Right. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And I was I was more excited just the fact that I could tattoo myself. Like, yeah, that's like pretty good. the very first day, <laughs> it went zzz, I put and just start drawing on my ankle. I was like, Do you remember the pain though when you first touched that ankle and you were like, Oh my god, this is real. This is yo, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> shit, I can't just do a line now. I gotta keep going. Now I gotta, I have a tattoo on the top of my foot that I did myself, and it's, it was supposed to be, uh, oh, we have the same birthday. I feel bad. I, um, James Dean, supposed to be a quote from James right. Dean, right? It was like, Live every day like it's your last. It was supposed to go across my foot. And I'm like, This is gonna be dope. Man, I got live. <laughs> I got just live on top of my foot, Ooh. and and I forced myself to do that because that first line on the L, I went Z-oh. oh, well, it's nothing but bones. Yeah. Get bone down but, there. You're gonna feel every bit of that. Oh man, and doing it to yourself. Man, I had to get through the rest of those <laughs> those other three letters. Hey, I know the struggle. I know the struggle, man. But it's it's to complete it though, and finish it. You're like, yes, I did it. Yes, exactly. And people exactly. get hooked on that as far as. It almost is like a drug when you're doing it. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. I did that. I want to do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, I mean, it's so easy to get addicted to tattoos. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I started when I was like 15. And, wow. Yeah. And, like, and I was I was Tupac and Lil Wayne mixed. I, was, <laughs> I knew what my purpose was. I, I love got, it. Man, I got two my first time. Like, I couldn't even pick. I, so I got two of them. So how many tattoos you got now, you think? Total. Maybe like 60 or so. Some I don't even know how to really count them, like pieces wise. You know what I mean? They're probably yeah, all floating can't. together. At this yeah, point. yeah, yeah. But really you ain't to... stopping, are you? Uh, no. <laughs> I want to. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, but you just keep thinking of stuff. You get I think it's on. a sensitive I mean, you got area, it. man. But probably about, probably more than you. You just can't yeah. count. You can't. You can't because you got the. I don't, I don't know. Like you I said, piece it, for piece, you, you know, it's like yeah. you look at the arms. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like it, this arm easily two hundred little ones right in right. a row. But I just count as one piece. I <laughs> swear, on, <laughs> one piece. Man. I swear. If people ask me, like, if I'm at work and they ask me, like, man, it's just one. I go, to, I take showers and they just keep popping up. Yeah, it's, it's just, just <laughs> you know, scrubbing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you think the the biggest misconception for a tattoo artist is? Not the shop owner. We're talking to you as the artist right now. As the artist, you mean like what people think of you when they first see you? Well, no, not personally. Just as yeah, your job, as yeah. your career. What do you think? One of the uh, biggest... a lot of people. I'll be honest with you. Uh, a lot of people don't even consider it a job. I've had people come in, clients, and they would literally tell me, "Hey, man, why don't you just sit for a living?" I'm like, man. I... I know I sit for a living, but what I do takes a lot of mental capacity. I'm not lifting 500 pounds of this and this all day. I'm not working on a line in a factory. But I'm gracious for my job, but it's still hard. Like mm-hmm. doing a portrait is not easy. No, you know, especially when you're doing it right. It's not easy. That shit is hard. 
And, but, and it also that that takes a toll on your back still. That yeah, your back, your, um, yeah. your your gut and your back are gonna take the most strain and because you, you know, yeah. 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 How's your hand feeling? Uh, it's all right now. I'm getting easy. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's not easy on the body, man. But it's it's harder on the mind though. Like you're willing to take that and balance. Like, hey, I could deal with the gut. I could deal with the back <laughs> as long as I can keep tattooing. Definitely. Right. Right. Well, yeah, so it's it's but yeah, it's not a considered a real job. Even with a lot of financial companies, if you went through, a, <clears throat> me and my missus, excuse me, we were gonna get a house last year, and if I was a construction worker, or someone that had a different type of self employment job, I would have gotten a better loan. Right. Yeah. But because I was a tattoo artist, they dove into it a little bit deeper and then looked at it less. They, I guess it was like one eighty we should have gotten, but we didn't. We only go. Like one thirty or one forty. See, and mm. people—that's crazy. They don't even realize that tattoo artists make great money with, right. with not even a huge, huge overhead. How how much would you say one bottle of Indian ink or whatever ink you use? Well, Indian ink man, is actually hazardous to the skin. Okay, well, Pass wow. up. but um, there's certain metal ion base that goes into the ink. Right. Oh. And man. India ink is used for you know calligraphy things like that. Gotcha. It's gotcha. different. Mm -hmm. um, but tattoo based pigment inks, I mean, they're safe for the skin. But you'll pay about twenty five to twenty six dollars for a, I don't know, six to eight ounce bottle of nice black outlining ink. Right. As far as colors go, though, colors get way on the expensive side. Oh, I can imagine. So a nice set of Eternal colors are gonna cost roughly anywhere from eight hundred to thirteen hundred. Right. So, yeah. so wh what would you say you could flip that one bottle of black? Tattoo ink. Oh, boy. Let's see. I How many tattoos? An eight ounce bottle of black ink every two months to three months. Depending okay. on how, how frequently I'm tattooing. Sometimes I get in the moods where I want to do four a day. Sometimes I want to do two a day. Right. And that'll depend on how much the bottle lasts. But man, you could probably flip that to. Oh, it's tough to say, man. That's Let's really say a seasoned say. tattoo artist. A seasoned tattoo artist should pull in roughly. 70 to 80 grand a year there you go so you know divide that well, by it's half it's not a real job yeah that is not a real job so divide that bottle cost but not the bottle cost divide that by six months annually and then the cost of the bottle you know and, you know you get your cost of your gear and stuff but what i'm just trying the point i'm trying to make oh like it up love it up there you go yeah the point i'm trying to make is that you know, we're uh, they're making good money. Hell yeah! yeah. The profit margin is Hell just yeah. huge, right there. Yeah. I made a good profit margin in six months. To be honest, I was, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we do good. <laughs> we do good, and yeah. you know what? But everybody can Amazon. profit in the organization in the industry. But in order to make something of yourself, you have to be good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, like let's six work months works. or eight months. But if you're good. You'll have a career for the rest of your life. Right. See, that's a trade skill. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think it'll get to the point to where they, uh, like, trade schools do tattooing. I'll ask Sydney. Sydney's only been doing it for four months, and she's seen the whole side of the industry that, like um, you, being six months in or something, she's doing that at a professional shop, so it's it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can only kid, imagine. How much do you think you've made in four months? Hmm, gosh. Put you right on the spot. Probably about... And I thousand. Boom. Wow. Four months. Right. Four months, dude. I'm about to get my needle again. You know, maybe I need some more patience. <laughs> Boy, this is an apprentice that is thriving. You know, she's not just sitting back and trying to feed off of someone else's reputation. She's building her own clients. She's working on her artwork, her skill. Her trade means something to her, so she's constantly going to evolve. Right. This kid right here, Sid the Kid, is going to be someone to watch out for. <laughs> I promise you. I give her. She's already doing great. About two more years, three years, man. She's going to be blowing a lot of people's minds. Yeah. We're going to be on the lookout. Whoa. I should say pissing people off. You have Instagram? I do. I need to follow you. Hold on. But, so you've been in Columbia about the, in business the last 11 years, you said? See, 11 with June. 14 years in Columbia. 14 years in Columbia. Three years in Murfreesboro. That's where I started. Okay. Man, like, we have a, a pretty 
good supply of like tattoo shops? Does it like get oversaturated at some uh, point? Man, you know, I'd like to say it would, but it doesn't. Cool. There's, I think, well, we got, uh, we got Randy Inc. We've got Ronin, Brightmore, mm-hmm. Lucky, Revolution. There's another mm-hmm. one. I'm not sure what the name what is. Is it across. like Murray, Mule Town Tattoo or some I think shit so, like that? But that's six parlors in a small community, and it seems like everybody's always working. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a mystery to me. I don't know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we just solve the economic problem in America? <laughs> <laughs> well, they did a study back in during the Great Depression, and people spent more of their money on tattoos than they did anything else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's when they that, wanted that to remember time. the hard times they went through. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty odd for a great. Day. I mean, that was the greatest depression America ever had. And it's, I need a tattoo of this shit. Right, <laughs> right. I want some boxing gloves. I yeah. fought through this. You know, yeah. like, that that old school Americana. I saw. Are you big into like? Well, obviously, you know, uh, some tattoo history. Like I saw, are you big into like the Sailor Jerry's and the. Uh, you know, I've I've adored every uh, every aspect of tattooing as far as the styles. I've even done tap tattoos. I've tapped nice. them into people. <laughs> nice. But um, nice. was that here or like? Did yeah, you here. I, oh, okay. I taught myself how to do it, and actually had a, a willing client who wanted it. So I tried it, and I loved it. The only problem is not a lot of people want it. Right. I was just about to ask, how many have you done? So I've done that? about eight. Okay. And each one's fun. It's time staking because it's not like a tattoo machine will run three thousand punctures a minute mm-hmm. easily. This thing is, boop 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 boop. Oh yeah. no! So you can't even have music playing because you have to be able to hear that tap. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. oh the pe- man. It's oh, different gosh. though. There's a med- it's a meditative kind of state that you're in. The client can feel it. You can feel it. It's a, actually a really comfortable tattoo. Pain wise, I've asked each time, scale of one to ten, how bad. They've given it a one or a two. Wow. So with a real tattoo machine, they've always given it a seven to seven to nine. Right, right. So that that amazed me because I've always heard that they hurt. That's what that's what's surprising me when you when you say that because yeah. just looking at it, you would think, what the yeah. fuck is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I know the machine does this, but you're doing. I mean, you're I'm gonna... not a roof man. Have <laughs> <laughs> you got anything for him? Anything? Any questions? Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking about this tattoo. I want to get covered up. I'm like, what did you get? Make an appointment. Tell us about your bad Wait, experience. So we got a process <laughs> right here um, live on podcast. What do you want to get covered up? Uh, and, so this tattoo on my ribs that oh, I feel like I'm dissing right now. An unnamed <clears throat> ex best friend wanted to get matching tattoos, uh, okay. and I'd like to get that covered up, even though the tattoo is my idea. Yeah. Um, just because it makes me mad every time I see it. It doesn't make me think of what I wanted the tattoo to mean anymore. It makes me think of like the friendship that it ended. Fuck that bitch. I don't want her in my life. No goddamn. It's kind of big though. <laughs> no, I, like, I don't know. Yeah. supposed to be my best friend. Pick a cam. Pick a cam and let me know which camera. I gotta see which side. I got one on each side. Let me see which one's the better one. Yeah, it's this one. All right, turn to this cam here and. Wow. So like okay. this. What's it like, say? It's in Latin. It says, Take a Walk on the Wild Side. I like the Lou Reed song. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. All right. First tattoo house. ever, but yeah. Like, what do you, what do you think could, like, cover that up? Yeah, hey, come a little cool. closer. <laughs> Let me see. You got a couple different options. Yeah. I don't, don't think it'll be that tough. Uh, like, oh, anything's a, a broad yeah, spectrum, cool. you know what I mean? Because you got to live with it and wear it. Yeah, like, I don't want, like, a line of dicks or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not, not putting that on you. <laughs> but, we're doing a line like, of dicks today. <laughs> most things would be better than this. Uh, we could do like um, a sideways type flower with a stem and throw yeah. a little watercolor into it. Yeah, You'd have a whole new tattoo. But like I got this other one like on this side so I'm like Oh, you know, like as long as it just is like symmetrical with like this one. Oh man, that was a little on the rough side there. Scarred yeah, up new. and flooding. She went over this, I think, four times. You can I feel it. Yeah, we call it a braille crazy. tattoo. Oh yeah. Like, right <laughs> like a blind man could see it, you know. Right. Can well, here, that. I got one yeah, for you, like, right? Um, You'll have to get that one covered up eventually because mm-hmm. it won't even be readable. Yeah, I give you about like five it. years. Yeah. Oh got, shit, man. Yeah. You got branded. Yes. Yeah, feel this one. You got blinded. Sorry, I'm just like. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, every single tattoo she I have is like that. Yeah. Well, you did. Well, what was that? Let me see. Every single one is She just kept going over that one though. Well, I'll tell you this, man. This is an ongoing mm-hmm. thing that happens in the industry. 
sometimes the mm-hmm. genetics and genealogy with people like we um we either scar up easy, yeah. we keloid easy, we yeah. don't take color, some take color, so exactly. it's different for everybody. And yeah. I think I keloid up uh, and scar up easily. It's like, a possibility, yeah. man. I can't, I, mean, have, uh, I can't have metal on my ears. I can have it here on my lip, but if I put it here, keloid. it irritates them, and keloid, so I've got to keep wood in my mm-hmm. ears to keep that down. That See, I like that too. Problem. Like I can't, I can't have my ears pierced. I've had my ears pierced three times, <clears throat> and it just, it doesn't work. And then I got my belly button pierced twice and it rejected both times. So I don't know. It could be the jewelry. <clears throat> yeah. You'd have to get hypoallergenic stuff, real gold or real titanium. Yeah. And that should work. Remember I told you earlier about the metal ion base to the inks? Yeah. yeah. All right. So if your skin's allergic to metal or your keloid, if that goes in the skin, that pigment's going to raise your tattoo. Mm. So if you go, um, if you get a fresh tattoo and let's say four days after you have to get an emergency MRI. Oh. You can't do it. It'll rip the tattoo from your body. It has to be so many days old to have that metal pigment just kind of settle in your skin before you can get that. Yeah. And see, I was worried about that too, like with my sensitivity to piercings. I was like, is my tattoo going to reject? What's going to happen when I get this tattoo? But I just took a leap of faith and it it worked out okay. (laughs) Not not super happy with the tattoo, but, yeah, you know. I've got I've got tattoos all over me, and I just kind of just take them as it is, and if I can get it fixed a little bit, I will. But I yeah, that's where I'm at. Hey, yeah. we had um, remember your star man? We had to yeah. fix that thing up. Yeah, you know? we did. I mean, you've known me a long time. You remember when initially that was done? Right. <clears throat> and I didn't. I wasn't there that night. I was off. But when this tattoo had gotten done. I was so upset when I found out later what had happened. Yeah. Because there's a way to do business in this industry. And uh, I was so mad. I made. Uh, I tried to make someone give money back to make the situation better. And, uh, it, was, right. it was so bad. Like <clears throat> I actually pulled him into my shop when I opened it to fix it for him. Yeah. And uh, we did. Yeah, we got it done. Yeah. And it was... Uh, you know, it was a buddy of mine, and he he had just started tattooing. Yeah. So I was giving him a chance with it and stuff, and and I still I still go to apprentices and stuff, and and give them a chance to see what they're working with, cause some are really great. Yeah. You know, and um, I just he wasn't it wasn't his fault per se. It was he wasn't being coached at yeah. the time, like you know what I mean. Somebody could have coached him and kind of helped him along the way yeah. but i mean i think he's doing all right now and i don't fault him for it if he wanted to come back and do some work we could talk about it, you know yeah. but he uh yeah he's come a long way man he's doing good yeah it, i haven't seen anything lately but you know it was he had just started then so i was just like you know the day he started though no matter <clears throat> you know there's always a climb yeah know? yeah you know uh, like if you get something like that done they say hey man i'm only charging you 20 bucks Sometimes you really feel better about the outcome. Right. You know, someone charges you 150 for that, and then you're like, hey, something's not right here. Yeah. Yeah. But he was always humble about the whole situation. Yeah. And very yeah. Ma- you know, very good and kind. Mm-hmm. But the way he is now, it's the same way. He hasn't changed, so he's yeah. doing good. Yeah. Right, right. So, so the future. What's the future of the shop, man? What's the future of your, uh, your career here? Uh, man, I'm staying. Uh, I'm we are expanding soon. Yeah. We've got a lot of people now working with us. Sydney's one. We've got a guy named Rick. Um, Chuck works for us. And uh, hopefully more. Yeah. But uh, I enjoy teaching now more than anything. I really enjoy being an instructor. Right. I don't know what it is. Like I, I thought tattooing was addictive. Yeah. But every time I see this kid pull off a tattoo, I get more and more enthused for her. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Watching her <laughs> progress <laughs> though. Sleep, phenomenal, right. <laughs> right. Um I feel you on that and in the same way and Brandon can vouch for me this as I like teaching new generation of uh photographers and videographers and stuff. I like teaching them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How to do and how to how to do photography properly, what not to do, how to He's shown me a lot, like and I'm more, I come from like more of the artistic side of it. I'm just trying to yeah. make, trying to take a photo, but make it as much like a painting as I can. You know what I mean? I want you yeah, guys to see a photo and be like, damn, that needs to be in a museum type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But 
So I'll have just nothing but a creative idea, but he knows technologically how to make that work. Like, like lighting you said, a photo, but then you're turning it into art. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he knows, like... The business. I told him. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the real technical aspects. Like, even when it comes to lighting. Yeah. Like, if I see something, I explain <clears throat> it to him, and he'll be like, all right, you need three lights for that. I'm like, oh, for real? Because I had one, and I was just going to, like, hope the sun fucked with me. Like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, no, man. <laughs> but he, he does. And we about to shoot a film. So, like, that type of stuff, like, he can show me. Well, cool we go shit. through the same thing in our industry. You know, you yeah. got people. There are people out there that can tattoo. Don't get me wrong. You can tattoo whatever you see. You can trace it, stencil it, tattoo it. Right. And there's artists. And yeah. it's like, man, I, hey, I need this done. But I want it this way. I don't want that. I want this. Like, well, I can't draw that. It's, it's but if you get this one, I can do that one. You know, and then doing portraits, stuff like that, you've got to watch the facial structure, the key details to the eyes, the mouth, the nose. You get any of that, just any of it, a smidgen off, you just fucked up somebody's skin for the rest, rest of their, their lives. lives. Yep. Grandma now looks like <clears throat> Edward Scissorhands. Right, <laughs> right, right. And, and you're stuck Fucking with Danny DeVito <laughs> daddy. <laughs> but man, even I see it with a lot of comic book characters. People do those, and man, they turn out horrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, and the, with the comic book character, every aspect ratio has to be correct. Like, that chest can't be too wide. Or, you know, like, Captain America can't have the Hulk chest and arms. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? Well, Wolverine's mask. Can't can't be like drooping down. Oh, the ears! <laughs> you know, you can't, they can't be drooping, man. Right. I've seen it. The claws can't be wiggly. No, that ain't how it works, man. Dude, somebody out there right now has a wiggly claw Wolverine on his arm. That's you just tell people it was when the touch, the, uh, the adamantium was removed. It's yeah. Claw. yeah. So you save yourself, you know. <laughs> you gotta go with it. One of the uh, one of the people on here that are listening, one of the listeners was wondering what is your favorite tattoo, and they also want to know what is your Instagram. Instagram is Joe's Revolution Inc. <clears throat> favorite tattoo, that's tough. Yeah, that's a lot of tattoos. Well, yeah, seventeen years of tattooing and. Uh... Okay, I remember one. Um, the the armor for the Italian guys was real good. Yes, that was phenomenal. Yeah, you could tell us tell describe that a little bit for the people listening. Yeah, um, oh, go to his Italian guy yeah. named Francesco Damian Blanco, <clears throat> very good friend of mine. We became best friends because of this tattoo. The guy wanted a an armor piece done on his chest, his shoulder, going down his bicep, and <laughs> he wanted it right then and there. Yeah. I was like, man, it's going to take preparation. That's what an artist should tell you. It's going to take, take preparation. Pre- mm-hmm. Yes. He said, Joe, Joe, how much? I said, uh, maybe uh, $800. Huh. He said, oh, only 800 He said, I go Nashville. They say uh, uh, 1600 Why so cheap? So this guy's right now, is thinking, this foreign guy's thinking, oh, this guy's ripping me off. He's going to yeah. fuck me up. You know? yeah. so I'm like, oh, here, I need a big bowl of pasta. He's like, oh, I cook. So he makes a big bowl of pasta. He comes in for the day of the tattoo. Yeah. We draw it on him with a Sharpie. This thing turns out beautiful. He yeah. still got it. I mean, the guy's a beautiful man. You know what I'm saying? He's got a six-pack. Jess, yeah. he sports this all over Italy and all around wherever he goes. And it looks phenomenal. God. Is it on your Instagram? Yeah, it should be on the Instagram page or the Facebook Dude, page. you do some amazing fucking work, bro. Good. Yeah, you can. I don't know if they can see any of it, but you show some yeah, of the I, portraits. The portraits are right on. What like, camera are you no, going to take it to? Uh, I think there's only two people that can do portraits this, in this yeah. town. It's me and Chad um, Chad Dingler. Can see it? Nah, they can't see it. It's too they far away. You know what? Just, just just start uploading it to the page. Take a take a link to the page or something. Bet. They'll be up there. We'll, be, we'll get it all up there by the time the podcast, the actual podcast drops. It'll be in there with the uh, the link to the podcast. So, um, so we were talking, Joe, outside a little bit, and um, we're thinking about hosting kind of like a what, what, what was it? What, what phrase did we coin this as? Ooh, what was it? A tattoo off, or how did how did we coin this? I'd like to put it up. I don't want to be too sarcastic about it, but how about shut your mouth and bring your ink kind of thing? Okay, shut up because there's so much yeah, talk shut up in, in the ink? industry. Yeah. yeah. Shut, shut up, up in ink. ink. November 9th, it's a Saturday at my shop. I got three booths. Uh, you've got, if anyone wants to enter, bring 100 bucks. Bring your best client. You have four hours to pull off your best tattoo <clears throat> in the four-hour limit. 
And when we're done, we have room for three more people. So we could have six contestants that day. And we could put all the crap to rest. You got a lot of shit to say when we got a place to handle it. Let's bring it out and wait, let the whoa, guns whoa. really work. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Wait, I'm trying to like... Everybody uh, go follow Joe's Instagram. I just posted it. Uh, but take this back. Wait, so it's a, a tattoo... Competition. Uh, competition between... And it's open to... With any other tattoo artists in the city that... Yeah, uh, locally. We're, we're going to have to... Just because oh, of booth... Oh, this is wait, amazing. Hold on, just because of booth space, we probably need to limit... We have six contestants total. Six, okay. Yeah. So, so, look, y'all go ahead. Go the first four hours, and the next three we go the next four hours. And we can either let Facebook judge who's got the best tattoo, or we can put together some judges, which shouldn't be a problem. We, I, here's my thing about letting the public judge because then it becomes a popularity contest exactly. i have lost several photography and video th situations due to popularity contests well i would pull it then where you know maybe a trusted friend you know someone like you Pac, i've known for years knows a couple people that would like to come in and judge a competition okay so what we'll do is i'll i'll be on the lookout for three judges Okay. Perfect, yeah. Three judges, and y'all heard it here, November 9th. We can do it. What, what did we say it was going to be called again, Joe? Uh, what is it, Shut Up and Tattoo? Shut Up and Shut, shut Up and Ink. Yeah, shut, shut Up and Tat. Okay, Yo, we'll have this it. This is amazing. I've never even heard of one of these happening. Yeah, so, I mean, I, a lot of people talk, man. So quit your talking. Let the machines do the talking. Yeah. Yo, let the artwork. Yeah. Let it. Let, let it the be artwork. known. What's the date? November. <laughs> November, 9th. November the ninth. November the ninth. Hundred dollars. Post the first Studio. battle of Columbia's Inc. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You think you're the best, and you got a lot of shit to say? Then come out and show us. Yeah. Quit Bring talking and show us. Look, security will strictly be enforced. No fuckery. Okay. Mm -hmm. I ain't. I ain't with the fuckery. All right. Yeah, this is. This is about art. Patrolling. <laughs> I have my boys. This is about the art. Okay. This isn't about. Anything but the art. Friendly competition. Let me tell you, one of the friendliest competitions I've ever participated in was barbecue competitions. People bringing food to Who's each other. Who's trying to fuck up a barbecue? Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I want, I want this to be there. just as friendly. You know, we can, Sabotage. Yeah. Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage that barbecue. No. We can do food. We can get some food trucks out yeah. there. To, yes, yeah. food Come trucks out, be you know, I know Columbia's got a lot of the, what's the, the Fridays now. Everyone's coming out for the food. So yeah. 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 Food trucks. and Hell yeah. yeah. So oh, we got us an event, gentlemen. Yeah. Yes. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Oh, oh, let's get ready to rumble. We'll be, you know, we'll be there live. Goes, if everyone can stay classy. Yes. Shady Brook Mall has been down for some time. Right. So there's some space to rent, and there could yeah, be yeah. one of our first local tattoo conventions done right there. Right. Nice. Easily. For real. Yeah. Easily. We'll have to reach out and, and find find out who we need to talk to about that. We've got that. a lot of old school wrestlers that wouldn't mind coming out and doing some autographs and meeting people. Yeah. yeah. So a little meet and greet, some ink, some, some food. Ink. Right. Yeah, you right. Be a big thing, man. Right. Hey, yeah. I'm loving this, especially food. Food tattoos. I'm with you on the wrestling. Yeah, I know some people with some food trucks. Oh, I can food. hit up for that. Food tattoos and wrestlers, bro. I'm with this shit. Right. But please, hey, uh, listeners, viewers, spread the word. If you yes. know somebody that does tattoos and they feel like they, they can put up a shut up, mm -hmm. tell them to, to do exactly just that. Yeah, what, what we going to do? Ha hashtag night. shut up in ink? Yep. Shut up, shut up in ink. Like, shut up in ink. Hashtag shut up in ink. Bring a hundred witches. It. Yes, a hundred dollars. <laughs> we got to get this flyer jumping. It'll be, hey, I'm going to run it. I'm going to run it, Joe. Go ahead and stand uh, whenever you get time. Are you guys going to be the ones uh, broadcasting? Yeah, we will come. come do it? Yeah, we'll we'll broadcast. Perfect. Yes. I love it. Hell, yeah. let's do it. Ain't nothing but a thing, man. Bring get it best, going. Your best client. Oh, man. Yeah. This is gonna be cool. This of shit. course, but remember, you don't want to do like you know a giant piece in four hours. No, just no. pick something out that you yeah. can handle and do for four hours. Yeah. I mean, if they pick something that's too big, then that's just good shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four, four hours is mind. plenty of time. It's plenty of time. A whole event, eight hours. You can bring business cards. You can, you know, it's a networking event, not only a competition. You know, we'll try and keep uh, people out of your booths and stuff. And maybe bring somebody from your shop that's not tattooing sure. and have them network with the people that are coming in that are observing and stuff, you know. Yeah. So. It's going to be dope. Yeah. We're going we live. Yeah. We're going sure. live from the, going live, from the Shut Up in Ink. Yeah. <laughs> Columbia, the 
tattoo competition. Right. No one's really ever blown the ink out of Colombia. It's always been a quiet thing. People do go here and there. Mm -hmm. You'll hear between shops, artists say this about that one, that about that one, that about that one. Mm -hmm. Let's just stop it. Why don't we all just get together, do some nice tattoos, and see. This is a proactive way to to, to bring people together. But also, like, just let's let's dead it a little bit, you know. It's been some years. We've all been sharing the same let's same do earth. It. Let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's get in here. We should all get <laughs> along. Like you said earlier, there's enough to go around. No one's really struggling for tattoos. Right. So there's no reason to be doing this to everybody. We should just be able to get along. Exactly. So what is this? I keep hearing about this brisket. I've got this. They keep telling me to ask you about brisket and corn. Oh, my God. What is that? Brisket and corn. Well, uh, apparently I make a mean brisket. Yeah. Best corn. <laughs> the best corn. Brisket and corn. So what makes you, what do you do? That makes a bit of brisket and corn. No, no. There's many ways to do brisket. I want to hear what he does about this corn. What do you do to this corn? <laughs> corn uh, <laughs> normally you go to a barbecue or something. Some people might eat one ear of corn, two ear of corn. If you come to my house, you're probably going to eat about four or five. Yeah? yeah. But what Take the husk off it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple, man. Leave that corn nice. You know, get the grill hot. Put it on the grill. Mm-hmm. Burn it up just a little bit. Make sure it looks a little bit black on some of the kernels. Yeah. As soon as it's like that all the way around, pull it off the grill. Melt you some butter, a little olive oil, put some seasoning in it. Spread that on that corn and eat it, man. It'll be the best corn you ever had in your life. Yeah. See, I've been dilly-dallying yeah. with this. Uh, yeah, I just said dilly-dallying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've been dilly-dallying <laughs> been dilly with, I've been with this street corn. You know what I mean? With the, uh, you know, the different little seasonings. I made one out of Cheetos, spicy Cheetos. And See, yeah, that's it one was way dope. to do it. Yeah, that it was dope. It still tastes good. Yeah, but it was I'm telling you, this open thing on the grill. Okay. Blow your mind, man. Okay. Oh, it's no joke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked me, uh, well, one, one, one of the people commented, uh, shout out to Pat. Uh, he wants to know your favorite art style when it comes to the tattoos. If you go follow his Instagram, I think you'll be able to figure it out. But yeah, I don't have one. I like uh, almost all art forms. You yeah. know, they're all good. Oh, okay. I saw like well, of course I saw you got a lot of black and white like you know, that's great work, uh, that but... comes with you know when you start doing something and you're good at it, people want it more of it. You mm, know? Okay. Like, it lets like Cheetos. You make a bunch of different brands, people still love the natural. They I, want that cheetah. Okay. But I'm, I'm really good with the black and grays on the portraits, and people love them, so they keep coming for them. So I do a lot of them. I feel but, um, Yeah, I'd like to do more color if I can. And more yeah, the of this one if of, I can. Uh, was it on the arm, the glasses? It was in color. It was like some eyes. Oh, was that was from, from um, The Great Gatsby. Yeah. Ah. That, was fun. that was fun. Man, that looks so, good. So, yeah, I, I love color. I love black and gray, all of it, you know. Man, that's, that's what's I, well, I'll, I'll give this out there to the viewers, though. I'm sick of tribal. You sick of tribal? <laughs> I mean, I love it when it's done, but doing it, man, that is work. I promise you, filling that black in all that time is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't stop, man. Yeah. And it could be a, a four to six hour endeavor, man. So. Okay. But they look good when they're done, but it just takes a lot, man. It's a lot of patience with tribal. What's the biggest tribal piece you've done? Ooh. That's tough. He's got a pretty big uh, bone stint on my arm. That's pretty big. Yeah. Usually it's it's a whole sleeve. Someone will get a whole sleeve of it. Oh, man. The whole sleeve. So how, about, how long is a whole sleeve? About six hours? Yeah, no. It takes no. time. Sessions, man. Sessions. Yeah, if it's someone tells you it takes six hours, just walk out the door and come find me at my shop. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, it'll take a couple sessions. It's going to take a long time. Right. Man. Even when it's finished, you're still going to have another touch-up session. Right. I mean, that black ink is just not going to hold that solid all the time. Damn. It might on your shoulder, your forearm, but your inside bicep. I never had a touch-up session. Ask Paco about the elbow. Even the elbow. <laughs> yeah. You're done. You're going to need a touch-up. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, all of it. You know, it's, it's just, it does. I remember when you're going through the healing process, that shit looked gnarly. Yeah, it was It was rough. <laughs> it was rough at times, so, yeah. It worked. I've so, never had a touch up session. I'm like, you I should do, do that. that. Do yeah. that, man. Because here's the thing, too. The like, no matter good how stuff. good, and this is the catch 22 to tattoos, too. No matter how good he does, if you don't treat that thing shit good, the, fucking right. Yo. the healing. Yeah, yeah, it's a big part. And then, guess what? You're back, back, back to him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't know what's going on. During that six months, I was, uh, I was like, uh, Semi pro. Uh-huh. Shout out to Will Ferrell. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but 
uh, this girl I was, I was dealing with at the time, I did this this big rolls on her thigh. Oh yeah. no, big ass rolls on her thigh, and like four days afterwards, it's starting to do like its little scab a little bit. You know what I mean? So she scared. she wears fishnet stockings. Oh no! No 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 no. no. She wears fishnet fucking stockings and scrapes the whole this thing. This is starting up. to sound like a Stephen King book. Right? Yeah. So when I'm telling you, it's, it's like gnarly. Like there's just like pieces of scabbed up piece that oh. came out smooth. There's pieces like still just raw. So I go in and I and I like try to do like a little shade on on the ones that just weren't like exposed, like that needed to heal up and shit. Just like a little shade. And then she just had this bad problem with scratching her leg, like scratching her itch while she slept. Oh, no. And she kept like stiletto nails and pointy nails. Oh, oh my god, god. So, this just gets worse. Yo, so one night she goes to sleep and she wakes up, and the whole thing for the second time is just is like her leg today is still just nothing no, no, but no. a scar in the shape of a rose. Like, cause she just scratched it all off in her sleep. So with now, in the nails. tattoos you've done though, I, yes. have you seen? Good healing process out of any of Yeah, them. like I did uh, mostly, you know, forearms. So I, you can definitely yeah. save if it wasn't for those. Yeah, it would have been fine, man. It would yeah. would have been fine. But <laughs> oh, that's fishnets. Uh, that's rough. I'll be honest, yeah. like we weren't together a few months right after that, and that was one of the those things when I was like, you know yeah. what, I might not need to be with well, you. you. Fishnet, right? <laughs> you take a scab that's it's even mounted up on the skin. Yeah, that fishnet grabs it. It what is, happens. It's grating it the it's whole day. Off. Yeah, it's Dude. coming off. That so, yeah. After that, I was single. Well, you got people, <laughs> people got pets, man. Pets all the time. Go Ooh, home with a nice, you. fresh tattoo. Your dog cuddles up with you, like, oh my god, I forgot Fifi. I just got this. Mm, dog go, licking it. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Licking it, Ugh. snuggling it. Oh, you get, your, you get your foot tattooed. You jump in your bed, put your feet at the end of the sheets. Go, we don't wash our sheets every day, man. No. So, no. whatever you put in there the night before is what you're putting in. Yeah, it's, it's just bad. right on top of you. I've so got, got to be very wary. I've got new tattoo sheets. Because I know you know you know how the ink know, runs out of me. I get a tattoo, man, and it'll just be running out of me sometimes. Yeah. And I sleep, and I have a perfect imprint of a new tattoo. Whatever I got, yes, it always happens. <laughs> and you're not what. the only one. A lot of people say that yeah. I have tattoo sheets. Yeah, mm. they use them for tattoo. They have a pillowcase, a T-shirt. Yeah, like I've tattooed clients for years that have still have that T-shirt, t-shirt and they're like. I wore that T-shirt, Joe. I knew I was getting a tattoo today. I don't want to get mother clothes fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's part. It's part of it. Man. Yeah. So, Joe, um, I thank you for coming on here. We've got to get to the next guest. I hate to. Yeah, I, I hate to. It, man. But uh, anything, anything else you want to say before departing? Man, I'd love to say uh, if you're out there in Colombia and looking for an artist, I do stay busy. Please be patient with me. My books are full. Uh, I don't have any openings coming up till end of November, December. Please stop in and see Sid here. Sid is awesome. <laughs> and uh, we got some other people there, too, you can talk to. But just come by and give us a shot and be patient with us, please. Sid, is there anywhere we can find your work? Do, or do, have you, has she already given that? Or? Have, oh, no, I didn't get the Instagram. Yeah, yet. it's strange. It's Sid the Kid. It's my personal Instagram, and I put my artwork on it, too. Yeah. Yeah. S-Y-D? C-Y-D. C-Y-D. Uh, and it's T-H-A for... The, the, it sounds like a really crazy recipe for some kind of pot they're going to start <laughs> CYD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Um, what do you put in your ink? What? THA. <laughs> Boom. Thank you, man. You're welcome. All right. Sid underscore you, the underscore kid underscore CBC. Go follow it. Right, right. Hey, yo, good work. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we appreciate you coming on here, man. We'll man, see you on November the 9th. Out, Where November are we going to be set night. up? We're going to be in the front or we're going to be in the back? Uh, I guess we'll be in the front because we got a lot of space right there. Yeah, you got African booty scratchers in the back. So. We <laughs> right. Yeah, we're going to keep... Uh, we might want to bring an extra camera just for the back. Just yeah. Case. yeah. We'll see what's That's happening. That's the show right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I went for the tattoo competition, but in the back, though. You, see you gotta see the world famous booty hole spot. Uh, uh, we're gonna try and get that video back up. I'm gonna try and get it from Joe. 
Um, I think Facebook took it down. It was on our page for a minute, but I don't think Facebook, it's there anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, I think they got it. Well, I'm looking so. forward to seeing this skit that they did. This oh, is- yeah, we did a skit. We're going to throw it on the front of here. I want to see how close it is to the video. Right. Oh, right. This, this so. It is wild, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> man, thank you guys for having us. It's nice to be on the mothership for a change and get out of the shops. So, yeah, man, SSU that, baby. Yeah, right, right, no problem. Good to meet you guys. And, it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so what we've got up next for everybody, we're going to jump into the politics. So y'all get ready for that. Um, can we take a quick five? I mean, we can stay live. Yeah, we can stay live. Y'all I'm can, dry head. Oh, go get you something to drink, cool. man. We're just going to keep rolling. All right, bet. Yeah, we're just going to cool. keep rolling, buddy. That's what uh, we're doing in now. Come on in. Uh, how, how would you like to be introduced? Uh, just... Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and watch the end. That that filter comes off. You might want to tilt it up. Yeah. Bring it up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you set up. <laughs> go ahead and uh, I'm going to switch the camera over to you. Go ahead and. Me? Yeah, you. You're going to handle this while I. Uh, Ooh, what am I going to handle? I don't know. Yeah. Just talk. <laughs> Is this Kool Aid? Huh? Great. Yeah, In the red? Kool-Aid. Yeah. yeah. All right. What we got here? All right, Actually, works you, out. You can leave your hat on if you want to do whatever you want to do. Ah, uh, now for those who are uh, college fans, they probably don't like seeing a gator head on it. Uh oh. <laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> so let me see what we're looking like here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, can you push. turn that light off? Turn the light off. Where? Yeah, it's a, it's got a, like a push switch behind it there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There it oh, is. Oh, that's yeah. That's perfect. much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very much so. So, that, this camera here is looking at you. All right. Yeah, but you don't have to look into that camera. It's, you know, it's just for the viewers. So, uh, so, we're changing gears here. Yo, I'm excited about that uh, tattoo competition. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's going to be dope. If y'all need help with dope, that, so. let me know. I want to, like, get involved with that. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. How, did, how well does your skin take uh, ink? Uh, pretty well. Yeah. This one, the one that I showed you that I want to get covered up, I've had it for five years. Five years? Okay. I feel like it's a little faded, but yeah, it's not bad. That, that might not have nothing to do with the artist either. No, <laughs> you know, like, like it's just it's yeah. just kind of old. Yeah. You know, it's five years old. It probably yeah. needs to be touched up. Yeah. You guys out of here? Now you want to smoke? All right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, man. Um. Hey, thank you for all the love. Yes. They're, they're sending the hearts. Whoop, whoop. So yes, yes. <laughs> so we're changing gears now, and um, you know this is a t- touchy subject for for a little bit of you know people out there. And I asked Josh to come on here because I had a conversation with him one day at what were we at game night? We were game night. Yeah, and everything he spoke, it wasn't any random, you know stuff read on Facebook. It wasn't anything that was like a, you know, propaganda or nothing like that. It was all facts and, you know, facts. it was, it was, and it was, it was good to speak to somebody that had numbers and had facts and had everything and, and could, could speak about history on the stuff too. It wasn't just, you know, bullshit. You know, yeah. some people are like, you know, they, it, anything they read on Facebook, you know oh it's the truth i can't stand that shit you know and even i've caught myself talking about stuff that turned out not to be the truth Mm. you know so go ahead man i personally feel like uh, social media has done a great job uniting us but it's also giving people platforms that should never have have the ability to like talk in public they didn't need it Uh, no no (laughs) because like you end up having a situation where people make or find facts that suit them they don't yeah. look to see whether the facts are Real. legitimate. Exactly. Right. So you'll have an inc- you'll have an instance where somebody will pull up something. Just you know, in the case of shooters and stuff like this, right? They'll be like, "Well, you know, this country right here had a shooting, but they have a ban on guns." It's like, yes, but they didn't get the gun from that country. 
Right. They, they uh, or they universe. didn't get that. It's And that being the case for right now, such as the shootings that have happened in Dayton and El Paso. Now, all right. So how many shootings have there been? Because I saw that there was a shooting in Chicago today also. I would. I don't know about the, I know the big two they've talked about were and the Dayton, and the, the Dayton, which okay. I think nine people died. I don't have the number of people that were wounded, right. and the El Paso, which is twenty, twenty, and I think maybe in the twenties of people that yeah got wounded also. And it goes back to the fact where people will play off their facts. They won't look at this as a tragedy of somebody getting shot. They'll say, "Well, El Paso is a liberal city, and the liberals are trying to take our guns. So look what happens there." Right? And like it, no. It's, so when people got killed. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what happened. It, it's yeah. not an issue of liberal, conservative. It's the fact that it's a loss of life. Spirit. It, and up. People are so tied up with what they want, want to believe. The whole idea of defending the Second Amendment and stuff like that. It's like we become numb in issues. It's like when little babies, well, little kids are getting killed. Yeah. Or right. people going to worship are getting killed. Yeah. People go to a concert in Nevada and. Get killed. Get killed. Get killed. Like, yeah. and, it's, and it's one of those things to where I feel like we we have to either make a decision to to act or we have to at least accept that we're the type of country that accepts this. You know what I'm saying? Because right now we accept it, but we act like we're appalled. But then it, it continues to happen. And uh, our legislators and the people that, you know, we vote in and Congress, whatever, things just continue to persist. And we always get appalled, and you always hear outrage, mm-hmm. but then it just continues. And we either have to be like, all right, we just don't care. We want our guns that bad. Or you do. we have to actually do something. The question is, like in some cases, just throwing this out here, as a culture, we're more appalled by sex than we are violence. Yeah. What, yeah. what does that say about us as a people that we get offended by a bare breast, but we do not get offended by the possibility of somebody being shot shooting up a school and yeah i mean that says a lot about a culture yeah a a mom nursing so Mm -hmm. how do you think that these shootings uh and and um condolences to all the families that are involved and uh that have been affected by the Mm -hmm. way but how do you think these these shootings will affect the political Plane because it's in the middle of democratic debates and uh, tariffs you know, and, and Iran and da da da. It's already a hot a hot bed of things, but now this going on, it'll be forgotten in two weeks. That's the sad part. Or until the next shooting. Yeah. Yeah. It will be in one ear out the other on to the next subject. As a nation, we have a terrible case of ADHD. Mm-hmm. We can barely pay attention yeah. one week to the next. Very true. We're it's a blip. Yeah, everything is a blip. It's and so true. It, it it's sad that it's viewed that way, but we will not pay attention to this. Will not be an issue next week. No. And hopefully it is. Uh, oh yes. Hopefully. I mean because right. it's getting to the point where a mother or a child or something like that, like it's almost a miracle if the person comes home. I mean. Don't get me wrong. There are not a lot of people. There are a lot of people who are getting shot. Right. And there, it's a small chance in that case. But we fear because we don't know where it's going to be. I mean, it happens Walmart. I mean, yeah. out of all places. How many times do That's people like, go to Walmart in a week? That's on america Like yeah. with the Waffle House shooter that, we, that, yes. that happened. If you're shooting up a Waffle House, you, you're un american <laughs> I mean, well, it goes back to churches and synagogues. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you can't go to worship because you're afraid that you might meet your maker because some a-hole with Comes a weapon there. decides today I'm going to make the news. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And in this last, uh, I guess, couple of days, like my timeline has just been flooded with with domestic terrorism and people wanting, wanting the media to call out the shooters as, as uh, <coughs> white supremacists, white nationalists and everything. Yeah. And, and I don't know, like, once you identify, then what's 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 the next move? What's like? So what does that mean now? Yeah. Domestic terrorism. How do you co- combat well, that? Well, not not only just that, but you know, they say that they have the point of, you know, where guns have been around for 
so many years, what changed to where all of a sudden we're doing mass shootings and everything. And I've put this point out here a thousand times. I say, I say it's a, um, it's a community issue. And what I mean by that is that, uh, we, the people don't have a sense of community anymore. Mm -hmm. We, we sit on the internet, we sit behind our phones, we sit with earbuds in our ears. We don't want to interact with each other. We don't want to get to know each other. We want to sit in seclusion and create our own realities. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I think it's smarter than that. I would think that this has always happened. We, because of news and stuff now, we know it happens. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that there's always been somebody who would shoot something up. Somebody would stab somebody. I think the violence has always been there. But I think what ends up happening, it's, we have become reactionary. We don't do things to prevent this. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying have like a police force of Walmart, but preventative measures of some yes. kind. Yes, yeah. I mean, such as make it a little harder to get like certain firearms. Yeah, such as maybe you should have a mental evaluation when you go, you know, uh, to right. go when you get a car. You have to take that first test. That that first test to see. Are you able to, to eventually drive this vehicle? Yeah. yeah. So maybe we should do. Are you going to shoot somebody mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. and have them renew it, a reevaluation, maybe every four years. It, Such it, as, yeah. It'll never happen because of the NRA and stuff like that. It's a big and the NRA, NRA has a stranglehold. Yeah. Well, That's here's the crazy money. part. There's like the history of the NRA, which I watched a video talking about this. Apparently, the NRA has been this gun happy on a more it's a more nuance like in the 60s and 70s that kind of thing it was actually gun control like smart gun ownership oh so let's say we pull the gun control okay every uh, now that's being done let's yeah. say we have a mental evaluation psychological whatever even though we get that there's still going to be people out there that are having a bad day lose it yeah know? i think the criminal uh -huh. aspect of it has to be put on like like he said like Brandon said earlier it's not just someone shooting. It's not about racism, yeah. anything. It's an act of terrorism. Well, it so it's is. Like, and but it's domestic. It's like, how do you even... I don't even know how... Like, honestly, trying to figure out... If if I was to ask you, how does the government fight terrorism all over the world? We'd be able to say, well, you know, we go, we might go over there and put boots on the ground. We might uh, do terrorists. We might do whatever. But how does the government fight domestic terrorism? Well, that's the whole thing. <laughs> hey, that is... I don't, don't know if you want to see what that looks like, and I think that's why they avoid story, using that story. term. So, uh, years mm -hmm. back, there was a guy in uh, Marshall County. He was making, uh, I guess they call them hydrogen bombs, dry mm -hmm. ice and water. Mm -hmm. Put them in a Coke bottle, blowing them off in the yard. Well, mm -hmm. the cops got a hold of him, arrested him. He got a charge of terrorism mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. So, this that's is right, right there on a lawn in someone's private property. Yeah. An act of terrorism. You go into Walmart, shoot people up. That's an act of terrorism. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. yeah just call it's it what it is. It, it goes back to the whole list, though. It, the terrorism, it's more of an idea, and such as you have to nip in the butt by catching early, by saying you're fighting a war on terror, right? You can't mm -hmm. fight a war on terror. It's a tactic people do. There is no unison in what they're doing. All that's happening is they're raising hell and causing a panic for whatever their mindset. The true, I think the true way you stop some of this is you could talk about the tragedy, but don't talk about the one who causes it. Boom. Because some people, all they want is that voice. Yeah. And yeah. when they shoot up thirty people, and you put their voice on it that they wrote, and they want that manifesto to live forever yeah. and everything. Yep. Now I made and this, this point. Been dealt with throughout history. Like, mm -hmm. There has, history. yeah, there oh, has been forms of it. Like yeah. it used to be called going postal. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> going postal. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. It's just. <laughs> I think when it comes down to it, in all honesty, for most of these shootings, and this goes back to another problem we have, is we have a mental health issue in this country. Uh, that's, thank you. Thank you. And we don't have enough psychoanalysts, psychotherapists to handle the vets that come back from war, let alone the war fronts that are being done day to day. Like, there are kids that pretty much have, what, PTSD because they went to school and there was a shooter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think... <laughs> Was it, was the guy in Ohio, his sister got killed in El Paso or something like that? Like, I think the guy, think, maybe in El Paso, sister got, 
The guy from El Paso, I think, because was 650 that PTSD miles is from, a real thing. From where, so he had to actually, if I saw the article correctly, he had to drive to get to El Paso. It wasn't like. He was there. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but I thought 650 miles was... Well, that's like, a, that's a plan, then. You, you, yeah. you thought about this, you methodically thought this out to do this, and nothing, that's not, none of that's right. No. But it's like, how can you control everybody? No matter how much mental health... It's a it's a tribalism thing, also. You know, tribalism allows you to get away with so much. Well, I think a lot of it plays into the social tribalism. segregation we have in this world now. Everybody is, like Paco said earlier, we're all sitting here on this and this, and we're creating our realities. Like, whatever they want yes. to happen is happening. We are literally separating ourselves. That, so that kid, let's say he's got mental health issues, which obviously he does, goes out to shoot up a Walmart. If he had two or three good friends, would that have happened? Exactly. Well, that exactly. goes back all the way to the Columbine shooting. Yeah. yeah. The bull, I mean, exactly. or yeah. the Richland shooting. I mean... Before, One of the things I wanted to po- I pointed out on Facebook, though, and I don't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Oh, no, it's... But we... Well, they're all young. All the shoes are young. And, and I think that correlates with the amount of pharmaceuticals that, that they have prescribed There is an exception. I, I feel like... I really feel like that, that that's a chemical change yeah. that's happening in the body. And even if you get off of whatever they prescribed you for those... Even if you're just in high school, you got four years on this Ritalin, on this, on whatever they give you, you know what I mean? And that, I think that we have not looked at the effect that pharmaceuticals have on developing minds. That's and right. Right. and then it looks, I mean, they're all young. It looks like we're just well, doing what? They're taking the piece of paper and writing and giving it to them. And just they're going about back and monitoring them. At all. Hey, how have you felt this week? terrible doc I had these bad thoughts about you know doing this, doing this and, that. and that well listen let's let's why don't we do something different why don't we try this why don't you go see a counselor none of that's getting none of none of that they tell you to wait another week yeah wait wait another week and see how you feel oh well next week rolls around wait another week in all honesty with the shooters and stuff right and i could say could almost make the same argument by adding uh suicides in the same age range of the people thing as Suicide Not really reasons. terrorism, but it's still falling in that whole same thing that there's an issue. There is a there's broken issue. issue with mental health. Yes. And that, I think, is our top concern as a people is we, we got to fix. We got to fix or at least catch the problem early. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, the lead singer of Godsmack, uh, Sully Erna, just started this new foundation called Scars. Hmm. Where him and the band got together and got a lot of people to fund it. So now everyone can get, in certain areas it's going to be in, can get free mental health, PTSD, abuse, physical That's abuse, so. mental abuse. And this band did this yeah. on their own. So If a band it, can do it, there's, then. If they, like, let's say community, not in a town. Let's say the United States is a community as a whole. Why doesn't every famous movie actor, big band that's out there, start putting forth a little bit and giving back a little bit more? Everyone's fortunate to be where they're at. Right. I th- why can't they? Why can't they do what Godsmack did? You know, what Jay Z and Beyonce is doing, man. What? They don't want being to be wrongfully to... accused either. They're trying the best they can. Jay Z and Beyonce. Well, I think in the case though, with certain, when you look at like uh, Major League Baseball, NFL, and stuff like that, they have charities that they all put money in, dump lots of money. LeBron James, he just opened a school, school in yeah. Akron, Ohio, that is amazing, yeah. mm-hmm. and he talks about what we need to do. And the response is from one side that doesn't agree with what he's saying. Well, maybe you should just shut up and dribble. Oh, right. yeah, that's true. And what it comes down to is, yes, they can help out. And yes, they can put in input. But then people are like, I don't need to be told how to live my life by, by a musician, or by an, an actor, actor, an actress. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, it's a pride thing, man. Oh, it's a pride thing. And like, well, that's human nature to, to deal with that. But as a community, as, uh, as, a, as a country... We are letting our ego hold us back from like from really fixing things. Yeah. We are letting our ego of of uh, it's about accountability, and we have to take account as a community, as a country, for things that we personally may not have had a fucking hand in, but <laughs> but it's affecting all of us and, and it's changing the the energy, the environment, everything. So we have to put like positive and progressive ways forward 
for each of us to do something to help with because that mental health can be as e- you can help somebody's mental health as easily as complimenting them and smiling at them and then walking Thanks. the fuck away. Yes. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. I yeah. concur. I agree. Uh, yeah. uh, I think when it comes down to it, like with when you begin these projects to basically bring civility back into things, yeah. then there's a possibility you create something greater because the job of every generation is to make the next generation have it easier and better. And that's why I fuck with Bernie Sanders because he's the only <laughs> one saying that my generation is fucked. Well, you, it well, comes... I mean, to that trickles down from the top anyway. It's been... It's just history. Nothing's changed. Yeah, I've yeah. heard people say this one time. They say, good can always evolve, but evil stays the same. And if you mm. look back in history, back in the Roman days, they had opiates, they had incest, they had rape, they had murders... None of that's ever changed. We could always be good as a unified people and be better, but what's happened is we've separated ourselves throughout this time, racially, whatever, and that's yeah. that's where we've gone wrong. Mm-hmm. Instead of going next door to see John or Jim or Peggy, we don't want to do that because we want to stay safe in our home. Exactly. Right. Well, exactly. it goes back to there's basic ideas that people believe, such as there's a dogma in certain religions that states your neighbor cannot be good because he doesn't follow my tendons such as i'm a in a case could be i'm a christian mm-hmm. that guy's a muslim so what is he well he's a terrorist yeah. i mean in all honesty yeah. it's like and well, then he he left he left a country like to, syria to or something like way. that to get better it's like yeah. no he he he's here to tear our society apart put hey, well, sharia case, law you know, I heard about this. I heard about this. Now, this is weird because no one would have known, but because this woman knew the next door neighbors, she was like, hey, I haven't haven't seen her lately in the last five days. Her shoes are still on the porch where they always are, and the car is still parked in the driveway. Is that how they came to find out about it? That's right. The neighbors called the cops. So if you you know your community, then you you have a better shot. It's like, why is my kid not coming home when he should and he's down at that guy's apartment that guy could be a pedophile but yeah. if you keep an eye on what's going yes. on and, and aware of your surroundings you know, it's, it's, top it doesn't shit. hurt to not it hurts to not know yes right. Yep. damn right no one it, will definitely keep you safe that's the name of the episode okay. it goes back throughout time the strongest communities were the ones that were close niche whether it was Viking communities or Native American communities and stuff. It's like they might have been violent outside of their things, but, but they took care of inside. matters inside. Yeah, they mm-hmm. didn't like the homeless homelessness. Uh, also, like going back to the violence stuff like this, right? These are internal problems that should not exist. Yeah. I mean, we have enough wealth and power that, and even if it exists, not on the fucking level it does. Five hundred thousand homeless. Is, yeah. is inexcusable for the wealthiest Absolutely. country that the world has ever seen. Yeah, that's it. That's, I mean, that's crazy. But you it, know that farmers get <coughs> paid money to not even harvest their crops. Yeah. Subsidies. So we've got people starving <laughs> all over the planet. And we're just burning shit. Oh, but they take burning grocery things. stores. How yeah. much food do they throw away constantly? Restaurants. Restaurants, yeah. Restaurants, yeah. Restaurants, yeah. Restaurants, Restaurants. Yeah. Why are Fuck we time not food. feeding people and taking care of people? Why, and, what is going on? But it, it goes back to that very phrase of taking care of people. If you start taking care of people from a young age, such as nip it in the butt in elementary school, you can fix a lot of the problems right off the bat. Such as mental health. If you actually put psychiatrists and stuff like that in the schools, in the schools. Good to meet you. You put them like in the schools and stuff, right? You might be able to nip this in the butt before it's a problem. Instead of like regular guidance counselors, have therapists there. Right. It's like, so little Timmy has some serious problems. Yeah. Well, maybe Dr. So and so can help him. Right. Right. And thus, or even just having that person to talk to can stem a, a, a lot of things and curtail. Yeah. Yes. A positive a uh, role model. And they ain't even got to be a positive role model, just somebody there to talk to, man. I, and, and I'm not fucked up with admitting this because. I'm really good at talking to myself and not because of it. But I went through therapy for like 12 years. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom just had me in it because my dad had, had left. Yeah. So she knew that I was dealing with it in my own way. So she just kept me in, in the school therapist mm-hmm. and uh, what's that one? Um, 
Ah, I forget the name of it that they enroll kids in with uh, behavioral problems. I don't know. I forget the name of it. It's over there by the by the hospital. Centerstone. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I've been Centerstone <laughs> private therapy like from a young age to where I was able to communicate how I felt or like be able to at least write it down and be able to go over my my thoughts and that type of thing and. Just having like a school counselor have more than one fucking school counselor. Like right. Because shout out to Miss Robertson, she was busy as hell. I All still, of us had problems, and, yeah. and she, we had one black lady to talk to. And God bless her soul, like yeah. she was, she's the truth. But she was tired as hell. Like you yeah. be going through some real world shit. But if you have somebody just to talk to, just a voice. Then you don't shoot up at school. Yeah, I used to give Snickers to them kids that wore trench coats to class. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck well, that shit. Do you know it's how a, refreshing that is, though, to hear that like your mom put you in therapy or like supported that and did, wasn't like, oh well, you don't need that or no, you're you're my kid and you don't need that. Do you know how many parents are ashamed of stuff like that and that drives me crazy. Um, I, I, well, she's the truth. I ain't think about that till right now. Yeah. But yeah, she like that like, almost made me tear up. Like that, <laughs> that's just amazing. Like go yeah. your mom. Like, she's the your truth. mom's the realest. Shout out to my mom. It, yes, it goes into the whole idea of giving a little bit of a shit. A goes a long, shit. yeah, just yeah, a little, little bit one. And you gave a shit the size of a mustard seed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I mean, be it, it creates community. Yeah. It really does. Um, instead of everybody thinking that their little faction is the most important, reach out. Sometimes people need to just know that somebody might care. Yeah. yeah. It's like maybe I shouldn't do this bad thing because there's somebody act- might give a damn. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, and that's that's all it takes. That's all it takes. We could have avoided Hitler if somebody complimented one of his fucking paintings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, that goes into the whole idea of whether or not evil truly exists that in manifestation in a human being. I don't know, because I still don't. I honestly don't know why Hitler was killed, was like so mad at Jewish people. I don't. Why? Why did he target them? He's, I don't get it. He was in the so same boat as he might just be evil. Well, there's a hatred for Jewish people. It goes back. I mean, in this country, we had Henry Ford, who published a magazine monthly that was anti-Semitic. Yeah. Walt Disney. Yeah. I mean, so so he might not be any different than what was going on around him. He just had the means to act upon it. Mm-hmm. It's the person that's saying, I'm going to kill the next son of a bitch that comes through that door. Well, he might not have the means. With uh, somebody who has the means, means. he'll actually got he'll yeah. shoot the next some bitch walk through the door. By yeah. God, I told you so. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I, I it could be that. I think it comes down to this. I do not think people are good or evil. I think it is all the opportunity at the time. Products of their environment. Yes. Yeah. Nature versus nurture. Growing that is up. the like most so important. many elements. Going I on think that. it's a combination of both because. Them, them, them folks that adopt kids from Russia sending them little, them little cretins back. So, like, so but, I think all, it might be genetics a little bit too. But in all honesty, when you see a small child, it doesn't matter the country. I mean, the color. The, it doesn't matter anything. When it is a little child in your hands, right? Oh, it is not good beautiful. or evil. Gorgeous. Yeah. Just, it is. It is a pure innocence of opportunity yeah. of life. But when that little child is about eight. Or so, I and them jeans three, start but, uh, kicking in. Yeah, but them no. jeans start kicking in, and they can start like devising their own their own thoughts and shit. It's like, oh, wait a minute. But All right. the, the question is, though, can that be prevented with a little love and care, a hug? Does a hug make a difference in that case? Yes, yeah. hugs, hugs save lives. Versus, mm-hmm. versus a father just, that decides, I'm just gonna beat the hell out of him with a. I'm going to beat Jesus into him with right. a leather belt. Yeah. It's just a matter of um, exposure, too. Yes. Like, so many people... Like, I think, with everything you guys are saying, I, I agree with most of it, but I really feel like that rabbit hole of seclusion and information that's obtained through the internet is very dangerous. Because what we have, we have people taking in yeah. information all day, sitting alone in their rooms in their homes and they don't have an outlet for it and then they don't know how to perceive it or take it you know i don't think it's all just mental health i think it's a matter of festering 
You know, yeah, just but stewing all day I like think that. what you're saying, I, the devil I think what you're saying with them being isolated stuff that trickles into the mental health. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I've been I've been down a rabbit hole before with with just sitting at home. I was really big into like internet gaming. I wasn't mm-hmm. really going around socializing, and I was sitting up at home just reading stuff, just looking at articles. I even used to watch the uh, I used to watch the KKK's web show. Just know how they felt about us. I like that, that man. You got yeah. your enemy, dog. So yeah. like, there you go. I understand over here and shit. how that rabbit hole goes. It was all kind of things that I saw and observed and researched, and I was just like, "What the fuck," you know? And you know, if you never pull out of that and get back in the community and get back to socializing and interacting with the man, world, be stuck. It's like a. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a, it's a rabbit hole. It's a black hole. Well, it's you, it's well, really easy to be racist today. Yeah. You see all like these bad things happening, and if that's all you're taking in is this negativity, then that's all you're going to have inside, and that's all you can put out. But if you see this negativity, and then you think of like, what good can I do for the community near me? Like, what can I do for the people that are immediately around me? Like, it doesn't fix everything, right? But it helps somebody. Yeah, like, if yes. everyone did that, imagine how different it would be. Well. Think about actually putting programs into play like Girls and Boys Club and stuff like that. And basically allowing, just say, the community or like the city Mm -hmm. to take time, pick up the kids, take them to socialize. And and I guarantee you in just about all cases, I would say at least Mm 99.9, color's not an issue when it's kids. So you can nip that demon in the butt right right off the bat. Yeah, Right there. So you yeah. start having these little interactions with kids where they go play. They be kids. Yeah. They uh, they could do baseball, basketball, whatever. Just the community, like the city, basically provides them the transportation thing. where the parents yeah. don't have to, have to. And they and, just play. Yeah, be kids. City funded playtime. Yeah. Because I mean, one of the <laughs> big issues go. now, it's like there it seems go. kids like are expected to be adults, like going into kindergarten yeah, immediately, yeah. like off the bat. For real. And For real. allow them to be kids with other kids and just maybe, just maybe, we can at least curve it a little. A little. We're, yeah. And because, like, are, are we the top in the world for mass shootings? Oh, yeah. We we yeah. got to lead that. Yeah, we, I think it, I, we led it by 200 holy. or something like that well, total. You got cases like, I think, in Australia. They had a mass shooting in, I think, 96. Mm-hmm. And, and they took up the guns. Mm-hmm. And they've had, I mean, there are cases of violence and stuff. But of course. That, that's going to just, that's going to happen. But right. it's not mass shootings to the same level. Right, because this is like, and it's. If they, I think if they reported how many mass shootings were really happening, we'd be in hysteria. It would just be crazy because it's like to be leading by two hundred. That's that's wild. That's nothing. Your news feed is nothing but that. It, but mass shootings have become so political, and if you look at our history, we used a mass shooting As technically right off the tool. day. The Boston Massacre, one of the most famous early, you know, yeah. treated for what it is. It's mm-hmm. a mass shooting. It's a mass and what shooting. they do it. They used it for a political game. Too. Yep. So what wow. you? <laughs> yeah. Boom. Yeah. Drop the bomb on you, bitches. I mean, wow. It, the Boston mass was a mass fucking shooting. They uses propaganda to get the revolution up, all the way gone. Wow. I mean, that's just one way to look at it. If you, you want to really, the truth. that's a fact. Yeah, that's I mean, a it's, fact. It's <laughs> and that's how. That's yeah. what I'm afraid it comes down to. It's so going into this uh, this political season. I mean, we already know that, that Donald Trump is running again, and then we have like 35 Democratic candidates that are all trying to poll and fight right now. With, with a week like what we just had, from what you've already been looking at the political sphere, with this entailed into it now, what do you think? It'll- I'm gonna treat it for this. I had a political science teacher in college. That explained all I needed to know about politics in the simplest way. If a man gives you an answer for a problem that's exists for a hundred years and ten minutes, he's full of shit. Mm. So when they wow. start talking about this, wow. you look at it for what it is. It's not. It's can't be that easy because it's a, the same old problem. 
It's the same and, problem. I mean, it, it's going to come down to this. Some are going to say we need to take the guns all up. That it's just the way it is. Some are going to say we need new policies, mental health checks, and stuff like that mm-hmm. for what it is. And then you're going to have a, a side that's going to make their point. The Second Amendment is very clear in what it says, so leave it alone because it's, guns don't kill people. People kill people. Right. It's like, yeah, but it's still a hell of a lot harder to kill 20 people with a knife than it does a firearm. Right. <laughs> So, so what do you think? You think all the guns should be taken up? No. Or you think it should at least be mental health checks and I, uh, I do and re- believe and revisions to to the um, treat it like a car. A car can be a dangerous thing. It is a dangerous. It thing. is a dangerous thing. Man, so you get run over by the baby mamas every day in America. <laughs> and what you and what you do is you know you uh, you get a permit, you take a test, mm-hmm. and if they say that you're good enough to do it, boom, you got your license. But in this case, we check you every four years. Make sure you ain't on the verge of becoming, as joked around earlier, postal. Exactly. I'd say, and that's something that that should be agreeable. Yeah. That's something that should like be uh, what they call bi party. Mm-hmm. But by the fact that it's yeah, yeah. the fact that it's not, and that's 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 the part. That's all right. That's what I want to ask you. That's the part. Like in this political season coming up, when we know that Trump is running, we and we see all these candidates and everything. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And we know that uh, that we have like 20 Democratic candidates. So, how do you? You threw me off taking my. I was I was really good. Right. Yeah, but we're live, and yeah. I, this is my pointer. This was just yeah. my, my thought process. You threw me yeah. off, man. All right, I lost it. It was the uh, Trump was running Democratic. We have 30, 30 of them, and the shootings. You messed up my thought. All right, let, let's, let's, well, let me ask you this then. Okay. Do you have anything? You've been so quiet over I'm here. Listen, I'm taking it in. I'm taking Tate. it in. But what I want to know is, and this may have been what you were going to ask, why is it such a big deal to get mental health evaluations to get guns? Why are people so opposed to that? I don't understand. Thank you. It Whew. seems they believe, there's a belief that it infringes on your right to have a firearm. By having a test... You're taking away because I could see one of the arguments is cars are not in the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. The Second Amendment is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that causes a huge debate between liberals and conservatives, such as, uh, you know, is it actually, are you supposed to have firearms or are you supposed to, or is that just for a militia? Yeah. But what it comes to is they believe if you add, I think, the whole license thing, I believe there's a possibility you're infringing on that. Well, it says nothing about having to take a test for it. It's it's yeah. my right. Yeah. So it's kind of like whenever um, I had this discussion uh, with someone that's a police officer before. Like, why whenever someone gets a DUI, do we not take away their right to drink instead of their right to drive? Because if they get their license taken away, then they can't go to work. They can't ever get their license back. And it, it was told to me that, like, well, your right to drink is a constitutional right, and your right to drive isn't. Or, like, it's um, You can it's look at it that way. Because we did sort of have a prohibition on alcohol at one point. Yeah, but like then we got the 19th, isn't it the 19th Amendment? I believe so. Yeah, so like it, then that got put into place, but... It it goes back to the whole idea, do you want to put somebody in jail for something everybody else can do? Such yeah. as if you take their ability to drink away, well, they're still going to drink in yeah. a lot of cases. I mean, yeah. technically though, did you take their ability to drink away or yeah. did they take their own ability to you drink You can look at it like that too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's a massive... When it, do we as a people just stand up and be like, you know what, we've had enough? Because it starts with we the people. And when there's so much stuff that we've just run off that can be fixed, that can be better, that just isn't, that isn't addressed, that isn't put into place and even though it could be overwhelming numbers that want this it could be marches of millions in front of the White House and they still go through with this thing that we that 60% of the country might oppose when do we as the people just be like you know no bro you got us messed up like well, you could think of it this way that has that makes people think on the same path yeah for religion in Christianity there's one book basically says the same thing there are 20,000 different denominations of that one book you can't agree on the on the you, one book yeah <laughs> so now you start to take it the idea of what the forefathers meant and now you okay. have all these different all these yeah. different ideas that was great uh, <laughs> i mean it we just great sense <laughs> it's great sense 
That's why, because we can't get the fuck along. All and right. I, <laughs> and I think we are very much into our tribes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody talks about what kind of American they are. I'm Italian American. I'm Austro- I'm an Irish American, African American, right? They forget the second part of this is the most important part to fix everything is we're American. We find out what we need to do. We f- nip that in the butt. Then I don't give a rat's behind what what you put in front right. of it. But let's yeah. fix the American part. Our loyalty is to America. There should yeah. not, I mean, there should not be Confederate flags waving in. There shouldn't be like Italian flags, you. all these other stuff. There is a flag we have with 13 stripes and 50 stars. That identifies who we are. Right. From yeah. the day day one. I totally agree with that. Like I to, like I've always wondered why like the, like I understand people want their heritage with their Confederate flags and stuff. But my deal is like it to me it's almost a terrorist symbol in its own. You know what I mean? Like, and I hate to say that. I'm not saying that Confederate, you know, people that have Confederate families, they were terrorists or nothing. But I mean, it was a war on American soil. It yeah, was it a is. war against, you know what I mean? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. It, they no, lost. It's, it's they we lost. have to realize for us to go forward, to get where we need to be, the United States has nipped in the butt some of the travesties that have happened we call some ourselves i do yeah, i a lot. that America goes back has a very bloody toe, uh, death toll well cornell yeah. west i love the fact like he i was listening to joe rogan's podcast yep. he was talking about this mm-hmm. and he talked about america's original sin then its second sin original sins what we did to the indigenous people mm-hmm. our second sin was slavery mm-hmm. right. it's like okay we know this we f- need to fix this and that's the thing when we when we as a people know it mm-hmm. and we agree and we're on the same page but those that are supposed to represent us that are elected <coughs> continuously are not fucking doing it. I mean even when you go back to uh, you can go 10 years ago to uh, weapons of mass destruction the people of the country the community overwhelmingly didn't want they opposed the, the war but it just happened anyways mm-hmm. so at what point after year after year after year policy after policy after policy and then thing after thing after thing we'd be like we would like it like this we we agree that this works Mm -hmm. and then those that are supposed to represent us keep doing their own fucking thing yeah when do we as a people just be like all right screw you guys let's throw all of them out start over the kick is we can do that every two years we why, don't, our, like, why don't they why aren't they getting flooded flushed out then like, well the issue is like some people whether they get pissed off about it or not are happy with status quo because the whole idea is some people have the idea as long as this train is remotely going in the right direction, <laughs> let's not rock it. <laughs> sure, it's on the verge of the engine blowing up and going to hell, but, but it's going right now. And okay. I think what it comes down to that for that to happen, maybe there should be a third, fourth, fifth party of people that are just like, I'm not a Democrat. I'm I'm not a Republican. Yes. I, I'm in this case, like I believe I have all these different beliefs. My entire mm-hmm. political career is not based upon guns, abortion, and gays. Right. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. That's so true. And I think in a democracy we should have more than two parties. Just to like to represent because it's 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 a melting pot. And we need more political it, parties to to represent the melting pot that we have. Because trying, like you said, to crunch all your beliefs into this paradigm is like, well, I don't really agree with that, but I still got to vote for the guy. Right, right. I've been excited every time that there's the possibility they talk about, well, this is going to kill the Republican Party. They're going to splinter off to different factions. They're going to be Reaganites and neocons and all this. Like, that's great. Three different ideas. Three new parties. <laughs> then the Democrats. They're going to break off because the moderate Democrats don't see eye to eye with the far left, yeah. the progressive Democrats. Right. It's like, good. So you know what happens when you have 10 parties? They have to actually start listening to each other to get crap done. Exactly. And it becomes exactly. a compromise and not... And now the promises you make, you have to see through because yeah. there's nine other guys on your ass. But it also forces you to listen to all sides. Mm-hmm. And that's the big issue. As of right now, Democrats and Republicans have basically become, well, I don't like what you're saying. I'm going to take my ball and go home. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And yeah. that's that's a huge problem. How do you get stuff done when you just don't listen to the other side? I mean, I might like liberal ideas, but I'm willing to listen to a conservative because he might have a perspective. I don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. It might make a little sense. Right. It might. So let me let's jump back into this real quick. All right. Um, with all that being said, let's talk about um, the debate. Okay, give me a run. Let's give him just a few minutes to run down like a recap of the debate in your opinion i think the debate was really five people showing off and the rest is noise okay it's the five people that we know it's bernie sanders elizabeth warren uh, then it's joe biden uh i i feel bad i destroy your name so much uh, miss kamala harris yeah mm-hmm. and um and then you have pete Buttigieg. Killing his last name too. It's 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 complicated. Oh, Pete. Yeah. yeah, Mayor Pete, as Mayor, they call. Yeah. Him. <laughs> these I think, I, these are bringing in their different categories. You got the far left from Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, which yeah. is that's your true Medicare for all, uh, free university socialism. In in a way, yeah. Dem- we gotta be careful because like socialism has so many variations. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. the only one that people seem to think about is like dictatorial communist like so, soviet yeah. socialism yeah. this democratic yeah. socialism yeah, and of course so, democratic socialism people go straight to venezuela it's like actually right. the scandinavian countries are the ones they're pulling from right, right. Um, then you got joe biden who is your traditional good old democrat which means mm-hmm. he's going to tell you what you want to hear right yes. but he also is a moderate and he works more towards the other side yeah. with the other side. Now he's not, he is a Democrat. He is liberal by Republican standards, standards by he, far, but he is nowhere near Bernie, Bernie and Moore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you got Mayor Pete, which in a way sort of feels like he's that young flavor of a mm-hmm. uh, Democrat. He's, he's more of a moderate. He's not far left. Right. Uh, he's 37, 38. He's a vet, so he's actually a millennial. So he's the millennial representative up there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, his big thing, Indiana, a small town, uh, South Bend, Indiana, mm. most famous for the University of Notre Dame. Uh, so uh, oh, same he, huh? Same town. Uh, yeah, same town. Oh. Uh, but uh, his little, I guess you would say, twerk that makes him a little different than the rest. He is. A gay man with a husband that's running from a very red state. So, yeah. yeah. Whoa. I mean, more yeah, props to him. I enjoy. He's a great speaker. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. he, I, when they were looking for the uh, Democratic chair, uh, he was one of the guys first introduced to him. I thought he was a great mm-hmm. speaker then. Okay. He has this whole idea instead of being a snowflake, stiff upper lip. So, if they want to say something, we'll take it on the chin and then. Give mm-hmm. it back to him. I like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Then you have Miss Kamala Harris from uh, Oakland, California. Yeah. For Raider yep. fans, she was your. Uh, <laughs> she was your guy. Uh, she <laughs> was, uh, if I remember, Attorney General from California. She's she has a uh, health care for all. That's sort of weird, because she still has like a public option to hers. I believe is how it is. Mm-hmm. So you'd be able to keep your insurance even though there is the. The uh, Medicare one. for all. Okay. Uh, she and Joe have not seen eye to eye exactly. <laughs> uh, bar. It, it really feels weird, though, because you have Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren who are very similar in their ideas. Very. And I love Elizabeth Warren because she has an answer for everything. And she is policy driven. And she yeah. has it down, packed. She'll break it down to you. She yes. wants to if you have a moment to sit down. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen yeah. to the warning scene. Uh, she, unfortunately, she has a file somewhere tucked away. <laughs> she's on the receiving end. Uh, Trump is not a big fan of hers. He, no. right. She gave him that uh, nickname. He uh, gave her that nickname. What's what's the nickname? Pocahontas. Pocahontas. Yeah. Oh. Well, because there is a little question. She did at one point claim to be native. Oh. Uh, 
Of course, it's one of those family things, as she explained it. Her mother told her Native American, thus she believes she was Native American. And I think she does have a percentage that is higher than some, but still... Yeah. Yeah. You're Caucasian. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. more or less. Caucasian (laughs) born in Oklahoma represents Massachusetts. Right. So, uh, (laughs) uh, white is white gets. Uh, (laughs) Pocahontas is a little... uh, that's, 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 is that okay? I know. I know. I don't no. think so. Look, <laughs> all the gloves are off. Yeah. Yeah. The gloves are like all the way off <laughs> that right now. Sound all right. Like no, I just... knew the gloves were off when Trump made fun of the dude with uh, the reporter. Oh, with the <laughs> yeah, the with uh, his hand. Oh he my god. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is new America. He said, oh, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, I don't know how that wasn't the end of it. Right. And I was like, yeah, no way. Yeah. Just like that guy. Even before that, when he made the comments about John McCain <laughs> being a POW and how he didn't consider John McCain to be a hero. Yeah. Because his heroes aren't prisoner POWs. Right. It's like, yeah. if you're a vet, how can you, how can you, uh, more or less, this guy who dodged the draft by having bone spurs make fun of a guy that went to the war, war. he didn't go to, was captured yeah, by the mean. North Vietnamese and tortured. How do you make fun of that guy and not yeah. just commit political suicide right there? Right. And, he just, and that wasn't even like a, a big, like, like, uh hoopla when he said it no it, yeah. it just it, it wasn't like when he was grabbing pussies that was the yeah they they were having a field day when he was grabbing pussies yeah yeah they, they were he said that on john mccain they're like oh that's not right what? don't say that trump that's stop it well, the funny <laughs> part about it is it's flea it's free publicity every time he says something ridiculous and crazy the news run it for 24 hours mm-hmm. you don't have to run a regular campaign because the news are going to put every, put yeah, what you point. say right there it doesn't even yeah. matter it's like the crazier the just it's like so who do you think America really I don't think Trump's gonna, gonna win again. I think well, you I, will. I, I, honestly, go ahead. If I could give the, the, the truth I statistics are on his side. Yeah. But then who do who's the best competition? The, well whoever candidate is, wise that you saw from the debates, who actually has an actual chance of going against them the best? Well, the issue right now is it doesn't matter what what their policies are right now, they're yeah. socialist. Even the moderate ones are socialist because... Really? Tr- no. It, that's, Trump has never... Whoever's a Democrat is a socialist mm. who believes in open borders and who are going to truck illegals all over the country and give them free health care and education while you starve. It doesn't matter what they truly believe. That's, what, that's the hurdle they got to go. I, I admire Bernie because Bernie has not changed what he said. He's a politician that's been on point, on message since we first met Bernie. 40 years ago. Yeah. But oh, I believe, I, for whatever it is, people like safe. And Joe Biden's safe. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they hit him with. He's I just believe that's who is going to be. The- that'll be who wins. And I believe Joe has a good chance of beating uh, Donald Trump. I don't think. I do, I do not believe that. I believe Joe is the Al Gore of <laughs> this election. And I think that. And I hate to just jump in yeah. on you like that. No, no, I got I, to. No, I, I, agree. I just think it's, a, it's just another, another patsy to go up there to let Trump get his next four years. But you see, that's the part that scares me because, in all honesty, that is not what liberals should be focusing on right the presidency's great Mm -hmm. you take control of the house you take control of the senate you shut everything he does down yeah but you're still combating him in there though Mm -hmm. but checks and balances become an issue when he screws up and does something highly illegal you can hold him accountable yep yeah you don't have to let it get swept under the rug no when you're running the show as of right now People, impeachment is the popular word of the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you can bring up articles of impeachment, but it still has to go through the Senate, which is controlled by the Republicans. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter anyway. No, yeah. uh, he'll yeah. get acquitted. Through, Mitch McConnell will make sure he gets acquitted. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the true power in D.C. right now is probably Mitch McConnell. Mm-hmm. Mm. That, How do we get him out of there? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the That's issue. You've got to get a Democrat that can beat him in the state of Kentucky. 
Yeah. In the state of Kentucky, a Democrat. Oh, see. <laughs> yeah. That's where it gets. That's how our political system or, works. Yeah. Or you take control of the House. You, I mean, you take control of the Senate, right? Where you have a majority, yeah. and then nine chances out of ten, the new leader of the Senate becomes Chuck Schumer, who and at times can be spineless. Yeah, I was, about, I was about to say he's a fucking <laughs> wimp. Like he's, he doesn't. He, he's not a Nancy Pelosi because no. Nancy Pelosi, guys, <laughs> some of these names. Nancy Pelosi, 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 she, she's a fighter. I mean, she's given up some. Her big issue is she's had to fight internal, you know, with the the four young congresswomen that yeah. come through. They yeah. made that a big deal. Well, of course, they're now the face of the Democratic Party when they're four, they're four ladies from mm. their respective mm. districts. And like, they're part of a party. They have a face. They're the future, yes, but they're not who the party is. Right. But Trump would have you believe That's that AOC are. and them are making policy. Yeah. And he's really framed it like that. And he's really framed the Democrats, like, as you said, that, that visual of being a socialist party. Yeah. That, you know, will open the borders up and give everybody free stuff while you starve. That is a hell of a picture yeah. to paint, like, for your and base. The funny oh, part shit. is, when you look at that right there, Joe Manchin in West Virginia, Democratic senator, he is not a socialist, and he does not believe in open borders. He is a Democrat. Yeah. He is, he's what I like to call 30% Democrat. 30% mm -hmm. Democrat. Yep. He'll vote for Democratic policies probably 30% of the time. He'll vote for Republicans 70% of the time. But he'll give you 30% that you wouldn't normally have if it was a Republican. Yep. Uh, Man. So, well, I agree with that. Huh? I agree with that. 100%. Uh, it, you know, it might be a problem for some people, but that 30% is still better than zero. Yeah. And then you have representatives from, like, what you have. They're framing everybody that they want to take your guns. Democrats from Montana and South Dakota who go hunting on a regular basis do not want your guns. Exactly. No, they, uh, they like a lot, of, a lot of Democrats don't even want to ban all the guns. Like that is a very <laughs> radical belief that like most people do not have. Like that that's just like if you compare a party to extremists on either lines, like that's why that's why we have like such a huge divide and we yeah. can't we can't agree because we don't see each party for who they are. We see them for the extremists that we see. Mm -hmm. well, and that comes down to it. And on the left, we're horrible. Like, the Republicans are not filled with white supremacists. Yeah. They have right. better yeah. flags everywhere. Yeah. Right. So, pick up trucks. Yeah, pick up trucks and NASCARs for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> A little left turn in my life. Yeah. <laughs> That's praise true. Praise hell, praise Dale. All right, right. <laughs> but uh, I think what it comes down to, you find a balanced ground mm -hmm. and it really comes down to the ones that are towards the middle on the right and left mm -hmm. coming together to realize that the two on the far end are slightly cancerous towards yeah. the rest of you got to you got to get rid of the extremists or put them out on their own on yeah. the right and left to find a balance of what you need okay. it's like uh I believe certain things should be free just because I don't believe healthcare should be a for profit. Healthcare and education should not be for profit. Yeah. No. Can I jump in right here? Yeah. Okay. And that's exactly right. Because just like cancer, just like HIV, it becomes a business and it becomes what's the best choice for profit, not what's the best choice for the people. You know, and I, I totally agree with you on mm -hmm. that. So, anyways, I just wanted to jump no, in there. Uh, Go ahead. I agree. We should be curing diseases, not being able to, where you can live with them. Right. HIV should not be something that, well, we got a, we got a medicine that will make it where it doesn't show up. Yeah. Is it cured? Is it no, cured? It, it won't show up and you won't have the symptoms. Like, no, cure it. Yeah. yeah. I fixed that. It, and that it's, and it, it's crazy because that type of shit, like cancers and, and HIV and... uh and even diabetes. Well, I don't know about diabetes. Diabetes but, will be. I do believe eventually diabetes will yes, be curable. Curable. It is. It's curable. just. A, it's just a pH balance. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it is. is. I have a book with oh. the cure to diabetes in it. Uh, it's just Doctor CB. Yeah, uh, no, Doctor uh, Africa. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It comes down so, uh, when we start actually looking at stem cells for the true value of what they're worth. Uh, stem cells will help. I believe. I believe this with diabetes and like. Uh, Alzheimer's yeah. and uh, dementia stuff like this because I think there is a health treasure trove trove in that research yeah right. yeah. yeah 
But then there's some scary stuff too. I mean, going to we're talking about medicine too. You there is a possibility the talk that they'll be able to one day with proper stem cells, you know, make children out of a lab that will be. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yes. a business they're really on the verge of now. Yeah. Where you, oh, I worked. Oh, buddy, here we go. Pray, <laughs> pray for no lawsuits. <laughs> so I worked oh. for a collection agency, mm-hmm. medical collection agency. And one of the ladies, it was the hot, you know, when you work for a collection agency, you can see people's credit reports. You can see, you can see how much available funds they have sometimes, yeah. depending on who they bank with. Now, the highest one I had ever seen, which was maxed out, nine, 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 like all the way across yeah. the report. I was like, who in the fuck is this? Was a gene therapist type of woman that uh literally she on her web page when i researched her she was talking about taylor making babies yeah and she had the funds boy they that was the best money but saying up under that plastic surgeons plastic surgeons and this woman were the top of the tier i feel like that's the devil well there's a there's (laughs) there's been a toy off the idea like if you make a baby this way, technically, yeah. right? It will not have um it will not have ADHD. Mm-hmm. It will not have a uh, MD muscular dystrophy. Right. Uh it won't have uh it won't carry sickle cell. It no, won't carry uh, it won't be on the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. It, Diabetes psh, gone. No. Yeah. MS, well, and here's the kicker. That's the There's certain things in your genes that actually make you better at things. Oh, we want the next Michael Jordan? Well, Maybe take this right here, this right here, right here. Boom, we got a kid that can dunk from the three-point line. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That. That's true. I mean, that's evil. That's, that's true. Well, that's, uh, that's, it becomes, it sort of makes you feel like Frankenstein. Yeah, right? Are we finally playing God? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's the problem. That's not okay. But that's, it also comes down. The fuck? It, it, it's a scary <laughs> thought. Hell but, yeah. uh, Am I the only one that watched the movies and took it? For what the fuck they were showing us? Maybe I just saw it when I was too little. What, what? When I saw all those sci-fi movies and, and shit like that, and they just kept making them in different ways. Yeah. All the future movies are fucked. Yeah, any yeah, movie the that involves going up. towards the future, like our freedoms are right. So just us or the whole planet right. is fucked somehow. If we, we need to avoid all the things that we've already seen in movies that are gonna fuck us over. Don't do gene splicing. Don't do clones. Right. Keep AI a little dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we are just but, going off on a tangent here, people. Like, doing too bad. Let's clean up the ocean before we start, like, you know, right. making sure the, the microwave could think. Let's right. prioritize, man. Well, you yeah. also got to remember, if we're looking at sci fi movies like that, we need rednecks with heavy machine guns to fight aliens. Right. Because that's, <laughs> that's their purpose in the future. Yeah, right, right. That's true. The only ones that were just like. <laughs> I I knew this day would come. (laughs) But I I think it comes down to it. it, There's an interesting question. I'm a a huge comic book fan. And one of my favorite characters was always a character by the name of Dr. Doom. Fantastic Four. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, His country in this in his comics is a utopia. Latveria has no disease no crime it you will live as long as your biology allows you uh, there's only one thing you have to do you acknowledge victor von doom is your savior yeah no free will yeah see that's not that's and not. that's the big question it's like but that's where we're headed i don't know if we're heading that way because yeah. i think as people are naturally pissed off like our leadership and it yeah. does take something like that to create a revolution yeah but I feel like we're we're very comfortable. We're the most comfortable people in the history of the world. We have uh, more comforts. Yes and no. Well, we have think? more comforts than any other people ever. During Rome, there was a term used: bread and games. Bread and games. That's how you distract the masses. As long as they're entertained and fed. Exactly. So it's like as long as people you feed them and you give them entertainment, such as cable being fairly cheap. Oh, they, they'll bitch. Oh, boy, will they bitch. Mm-hmm. But that will be the end of it. Yeah. Oh. yeah. What would you, what'd you have to ask? Well, I was just going to say, like, going back to what you said about, like, stem cell research and, yeah. like, picking genes, like, 
Do you think that that's going to make a more complacent human? No. Well, you don't think so? <sighs> like, if you, I... don't, if you take out the mental disorders and you take out things that make someone, like... Rich Charles. You what? see, that's, a, that's an interesting part, though. Beethoven. I think in the case of the mental disorder, especially the spectrum, mm -hmm. autism, is that where our geniuses come from? Yeah. Because really smart people are different. <laughs> they are. And yeah. really artsy people. Yeah. Like the person Much that can so. listen to a song and then play it and then play it better. Yeah. They're they're off too. It's it's like a it's like a a balance here and if you pull it's like when you're creating a character on a video game and then like okay you've got this balance of stats and when you yeah. pull from here it sucks down here mm -hmm. but when you pull from over here it sucks down over here and you got to balance them out and those people are like whoop yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so anyways go ahead i'm sorry no, to it, no it, it, i agree completely because and when it comes to the building i don't want to say build a baby but that's more or less what it is yeah, yeah. It it's is. build a baby it's build uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it, it's it's great on paper but yet i do believe we still have to maintain what we are we we're, we're human you have i mean to... it, but for some reason some people they'll always be against this because we're made in a god's image yeah a god's image because there's so many different gods that you know yeah. that yeah. we yeah. come from but i think that's what also makes us special and unique it's the fact it's like yeah you might be able to fix this but don't take away what we are the, the, right the spirit yeah. don't take away the spirit of, right. of what a human or what a person actually is like I, that's the devil <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, i mean though it, it's an interesting idea because of the fact like if you do the build a baby thing mm -hmm. i mean there is a chance that you do eliminate you know the problems right the mental yeah. disorders the the biological disorders yeah but is that really worth it and on top of that let's just be honest here we know by fixing those set of problems it'll only introduce a new set of problems yes so then we're then we're back we're back um trying to figure out how to fix this you know like what if these genetics creates massive migraines in the children because they're so focused there's no there's no not give a fuck left in them they're focusing so hard suicide rates go up migraines all that stuff you know so what happens if they all become sociopaths oh yeah, yeah. by programming them you take out empathy yeah which is like a very important human mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and the, the certain mental disorders make you more empathetic and stuff or they make yeah. you um more compassionate they make you more excited about certain things right. and so like mental disorders aren't always like a bad thing like i know no. that like it's it's in a bad light especially right now with gun violence and everything yes. but like it's not always a bad thing like if you can learn to channel a mental disorder and use it to your advantage it's almost like you're a superhero yeah for real yeah kind of said. yeah <laughs> yeah kind of said, i'm bipolar i'm a superhero <laughs> <laughs> so Hey, I'm I'm not trying to jump in and, and cut it. I know you have to be somewhere in like 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, y'all, this is Josh Hay. I'm going to have him on here periodically when everything starts spiking with uh, the political uh, world of, you know, situation in America. I'm going to have him come on and give us like little recaps and his opinion on things. I like his opinion. It, it stays pretty down the middle. Some may agree with that. Some may disagree, but... You know, for what it is, I agree on that. Um, anything? Well, let me just ask you one last thing. All right. Uh, let me get a, a two-year prediction for America. Where do you think we'll be? I'm hoping in two years that we will avoid a military issue with Iran. Okay. I'm like, this is a hope in... That calmer heads will make it where we don't go to war with Iran. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that. I will say this: I'm not a huge Trump fan, but talking to North Korea, just talking to them, is doing a little better job than we've done. Yeah. Fifty, sixty years. Right. We've mm -hmm. made bounds with that. And I'm hoping they they take that same approach and we get somewhere with Iran. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid for our economy. We've been riding high for a little while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're overdue to trip and fall. Which, okay. hold on, which with that, if we do trip and fall, all you people saving money is now the time 
to buy the house when when we trip and fall. I bought my house during a recession. It was the best move. I bought my classic car during a recession. Best move possible. Save your money. Get ready for this fall because when you fall, you can ball. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes down to these happen throughout history. There are recessions. They just any point where you're riding high, you eventually got to come to earth. You could get right back up there, but uh, I'm afraid that recession will happen. Well, you could be like Greece and Rome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the part that I'm the most afraid for, and I hope it, it settles down, is we need a little more civility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need to we need to stop. This is what I'm hoping. If we treat each other a little better, we talk to each other, then we could at least get ready for a good future. Mm-hmm. A future where we remember that we're America. We're the United States. I, we don't need to make America great. We just need to twinkle little things here and there. <laughs> we feed those who need to get food. We give those who need clothes. We give them homes. We mm-hmm. take care of. We take care of the people that need it, and then we get ready for the people that are going to come. Because when it's all said and done, we are the shining star. Right. Why do people want to come here? Right. Yeah. So I'm just hoping for a positive. It's going to be ups and downs. That's two years. Just that's my just pity. Right, two year being okay. All right, ups and downs. Well, thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you I for sharing it. with us. I appreciate it. You know, um, I'm trying to get diverse guests on here and diverse topics, and he is part of that. So um, it was a pleasure uh, having you on here, and um, you know, hopefully we'll see you soon. Yes, sir. We'll yeah. probably see a lot more with it being election year. So yeah, well, we got uh, yeah. we got a primary. Then we got the big dog election. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm expecting as much name calling as a second grade playground. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> right, and like not only that, but expect a ton of um, propaganda on social media. You know, a bunch of bullshit articles and all that stuff. stuff. Yes, fact check. Fact check. Fact and just check. also remember, we have been warned that our fellows that are in Russia are still making their fake uh, sites to incite right, everybody. Right. And we've done absolutely squat to prevent it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, it's up to Facebook it. to give us the true, uh, true yeah. site. We're screwed. Just because uh, it's yeah. on the internet, y'all, doesn't make it real. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. The fact that because of an election is coming up, we have to put out warnings. Be careful what you see on Facebook. Right. Like, but, shit. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. For I sure. see an election coming up, y'all. It might be some fake news. I still <laughs> stand by with the election coming up, though. Those words of if somebody gives you a 10-minute answer for a 100-year problem, they might be full of shit. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, Tay Tay, also, I wanted to tell you thank you for coming on, filling in. It was my pleasure. This was a great time. A good deal. Yeah. I Maybe next time. I want, to, I want you to get more mic time next time. So, okay. she's hilarious, and I don't feel like we got to exercise <laughs> the level of crazy hilarious that comes out of this girl. This is one that I'm like more serious about, so I feel like I had more serious questions and just kind of like took stuff in. Yeah, I, I wanted to change gears this episode. Yeah. Because we, we threw out a lot of ratchet for a minute. <laughs> we were talking some ratchet shit for a while. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of come in and, and say, you know, here's some seriousness. And then, yeah. you know, it was, it was cool, though. Yeah. It was cool. B, what you reading up there? I'm reading the comments from everybody. I, I, I love these uh, discussions going on about the topics, like, but they're amongst each other. Yeah. I'm liking all of that. So keep that going. Uh, yeah. Express your, your views and your opinions. Yeah, and love it, guys. Yeah. Also, so subscribe to the podcast pages. Yes. Even though we're doing this, we still Need want you to you. go to the podcast, subscribe. You'll hear the skits. You'll hear more of what we're talking about. We add some little extra stuff in there. Also, I'm going to post the link about the uh, the donations. Got to keep this going, so keep the money flowing, y'all. I surely appreciate all the donations, anything we get. It goes right into the podcast. We're not paying any bills with your money. We're, We're trying to get a VW bus. Yeah, we want a VW yes. bus. Yeah, we want a we new want one. A VW so. bus. <laughs> we'll take the podcast on the road. 
We'll pull up. We'll go to uh, barbecue um, cookoffs because they're the most peaceful, apparently. Yes, they are. <laughs> we will do you... podcasts live, <laughs> <laughs> dude. When I was when I was doing the uh, the barbecue stuff, like no joke, I'd be there and I'd be checking the smoker and stuff. And then also shout out to Mark Marshall. He was my partner in the crime with that. But uh, and t- uh, oh my god, how did I forget his name? Ted. He's got a like a Polish last name, but is the first name Ted? <laughs> Shout out to Ted. It's like Kozlowski or something. I don't know. My yeah. bad. Ted and Michelle, y'all are cool too. Tisha, hey, what's up? Anyway, so we'd be out there barbecuing, and people would just walk up with like a half rack of ribs. Like, and we're not talking about your your Kroger half rack of ribs. We're talking about a motherfucker that's traveled half the country competing, and they're just like, hey, here you should you should try this. And then I'm like, thank you. Oh this is wonderful. <laughs> and then like they, then the other team over there will see you eating and smiling, and they'll be like, ah, two bones. And then they'll come over there with two bones, and they'll be like, oh, you thought those were good? You should try these. I'm like, I should. <laughs> I should definitely try these. You know? And it was wonderful, man. It was... Uh, so then we're handing out ribs, and I'm like, mm, you should maybe try these. <laughs> yeah, that place you just gave me, baby, I don't know if I got that sauce. I don't know, but here, here's some free ribs, my nigga. <laughs> yeah. It's food in general. Right, right. Because, you know, think about it. People get together usually only for, like, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Food holidays. Yeah. Yes. It's like, and funerals. People yeah. bring food to funerals. It's the whole yeah, idea. Yeah. It's like, I might hate that SOB over there, but there's food here. I could tolerate him for 30 minutes. Right, right. Uh, Maybe we should start uh, putting, like, food on our flag. Like, instead of stars and stripes, maybe we should have, like, ribs and barbecue yeah. and bacon. Yeah. And this stars. is what we're really yeah. about. This is what we're really about. about. That's what I love about being from a melting pod. Bring all your cuisine. Yeah. 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 If we had a, a nationwide potluck, we would really fix a bunch of problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and they, but we, oh, but that'd be dangerous. So I'd say maybe we should do a community pilot, but I just don't trust everybody. I don't trust but, everybody's potato salad. Well, you know, yeah. Cultures eat different foods that just But are, that's okay. Yeah. Detroit yeah. has the culture. No. Was it Culture Fest? I don't know. It's one of them that where they just had all the people bring all the food in and yeah. stuff. But, man, like a community pilot, that would be – that might be – kind of too much but how do you, you tell the person the butthole, that's cooking for your, your pot oh your we might get the butthole potato salad guy. yeah the butthole uh, guy well and that plan just got shut yep. down yeah just the no pot well <laughs> no pot at the time there's always that one person that can't cur- cook worth a shit that just like oh, yeah that's this is yeah. oh god yeah. should have brought some lays karen yeah, yeah. Brought yeah. Some why didn't you bring the punch i appreciate the enthusiasm but yeah <laughs> yeah. Too much. Too much. So, all right, guys. Um, we're gonna conclude this. We're man. We're at two hours and fifteen minutes. Yeah. We we gonna have to figure. Hey, out yo, a way. donate. Yeah, for real. Donate. I hope y'all enjoyed that two hours and fifteen minutes of gold. That, that's a blockbuster movie. That's a blockbuster yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um. Donate. We need a VW bus so we can do this on the road. Right. Right. That's See, my no. goal. I want us to get a VW. Man. <laughs> The the newest episode coming up on the actual podcast, I think the one to air is um, Brand Ready. He's going to be... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that'll be the next one. So download that, listen to it, get the full interview, and uh, enjoy it, man. So look, yeah. this is uh, the SS Who Dat, and uh, I'm signing out, homie. Peace. <laughs>